Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Warminster Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, June 20th, 2019. Will everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Kennedy, will you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would everybody please remain standing for one moment as we remember those men and women who are protecting us both at home and overseas. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. We're going to start off this evening with uh, supervisor announcements. Mr. Monroe. None this evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Frescator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have some announcements on behalf of our uh, Parks and Recreation Department. Warminster Day celebration, I was unable to attend. I was out of town for a family emergency, but I understand it went very well, and we'd like to thank all the sponsors, vendors, and volunteers for participating in Warminster Day at Warminster Community Park. The event was a tremendous success, and we greatly appreciate your support. Please be sure you visit all the businesses that sponsored this event. Listing can be found at www.warminsterdays.org. Discount tickets are sold to Warminster Community Park. Movie tickets year-round for $9.50. Summer tickets for amusement parks. Local attractions have arrived. Download the list at warminstertownship.org. You can call the office to be sure the tickets you need have arrived. Tickets are sold Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Park and Rec offices in Warminster Community Park. August Community Yard Sale. Saturday, August 24th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Warminster Community Park. Vendor forms will be online by the end of June. 20 by 20 vendor spots are available for $25 and supply is limited. The Friends of Warminster Park's Hometown Hero banners are available. Friends of Warminster Park invites all residents to participate in the Hometown Hero banner program along Veterans Way in Warminster Community Park. For more information, visit www.friendsofwarminsterparks.org. For more information on any of these programs, you can call the Parks and Rec office at 215-443-5428 or visit the Township website, www.warminstertownship.org. Special events. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rescator. You're welcome. Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's good to see all our firefighters in the house tonight, and it, and it brings the thing to me that um, May the 21st, I really appreciate what, what you guys did over at the firehouse. They donated a, a bench in memory of Jim Kruger that it's, it'll be permanently in front of the firehouse over on Madison Avenue. I want to thank Chief Sapiro and, and all you guys for, for that effort. It's uh, very well deserved for Jim. Uh, you know, I had mentioned that night that, you know, this township has been 20 years transitioning from, from the air base and military use to civilian and, and private business. And, and um, Jim played a huge, huge role in that transition. A lot of people have no, don't know all the things that Jim Kruger did for this township. And it's a, it'd be a real honor. It's a real honor to have his uh, the bench with his um, name on there permanently. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, the only other announcement I have, Mr. Chairman, is it's that time of year again. Um, we do three major fundraisers with the Warminster Rotary Club. This is one of our fundraisers. This is a $20 chance, and we're selling 750 of these, and it will win you two tickets to every Eagles home game, um, preseason included. So anyone that's interested, I know Mr. Schuster has tickets too, but uh, if you would come to me first, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> and, and a professional, you guys have to buy them from me. So, <laughs> so I, I have the tickets available, and it's a great fundraiser for the Warminster Rotary Club. So uh, they'll be available uh, from now until I think the drawing is August the 6th, first week of August. So will be available. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Mr. McPhillips. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, if you've driven down Street Road lately, you know that Nativities Carnival is in full swing. And unfortunately, the weather hasn't been cooperating. And um, the reason why that's, uh, it matters is because the carnival's and activities' biggest opportunity to fundraise for their school and for their parish. So um, if you haven't had a chance already, stop by the carnival. It runs till Saturday. Tomorrow night and Saturday, I'll be at the Funnel Cake booth. Funnel Cake is uh, $3 for one, two for five, and it's the best funnel cake in Bucks County. So if you haven't yet already, stop by Nativity's Carnival. And also, if you have any unwanted or unused prescription medications, you can safely drop them off at the Warms of Police Station. It's the uh, green box at the top of the steps. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McPhillips. I only have one announcement this evening, and that was that immediately prior to tonight's meeting, there was an executive session to discuss matters of personnel, real estate, and litigation. We're now going to move on to our presentations. First up this evening, I'd like to welcome Mary Ellen Harper from ESCI, who will present to us the results of the fire study that she conducted. So, welcome. Good evening. Good evening. 
I'd like to just a little background about Emergency Services Consulting International. We are owned and operated by the International Association of Fire Chiefs. The company's been in business for more than 40 years, and um, we specialize in working with municipalities and special districts on projects like master planning, strategic planning, community risk assessments, and we do um, executive hiring as well. So just a little bit of background about who we are and what we do. And I'll just introduce myself. My name is Mary Ellen Harper. I spent 20 years in Farmington, Connecticut, where I was the director of fire and rescue services for a large combination fire department. We had five fire stations, 175 volunteer firefighters, eight full-time firefighters. And I, I tell you that because we were very similar to some of the conversations that your community is going to have. Um, Farmington had three independent volunteer fire companies that I had the opportunity to unify into one, and we had full-time paid firefighters that worked for the town. And with concerted planning and uh, by design, we were able to sustain a predominantly volunteer fire department because that's what our community chose to do. So as we go through the presentation tonight, I want you to think about, you know, what does Warminster want to look like when it grows up? Where do you want to go? And who needs to be at the table to have those conversations? Because I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to throw some ideas out of what you should be talking about to get to where you as a community want to be when you're done. Um, a little bit of background, as most of you are aware, uh, this facility study was initiated uh, following um, a notification to your township manager by the Warminster Fire Company that they could not guarantee a response to fire calls weekdays during the day. And what we did after that, obviously, was that the Hartsville Fire Company was added to their calls, which was a really good immediate response, but long term, that causes a concern because that is a strain on their volunteers. So that little problem could become a bigger problem if we burn out now both volunteer companies. The scope of work that ESCI entered into with the township was a um, fire department evaluation. And what we did is we evaluated specific criteria regarding all of your fire department. It's a comprehensive evaluation for both fire companies and the township where we looked at where things matched, where they didn't, how they lined up, and we compared them to national industry standards. And these are all of the sections that are included in the evaluation. Because the focus of your study was the staffing challenges that you're facing, the body of your report is dedicated to that. All of these are appendixes and they're in the back of the report so that they can be looked at for future reference later on. Just to give you all a baseline, we looked at the call volume. We looked at the actual incidents because we're data driven of what was happening for demand on fire service within the Warminster Township. And we looked at 2015 through 2017 and your two fire companies responded to 2,700 plus incidents over those three years. And if you look at the total activity by year, what you're gonna see is that there's a relatively stable demand for service. They're averaging about 900 calls a year and the expectation is that you can consider, continue to expect them to see that kind of service demand. It's, it's very stable. We did a hotspot analysis. This is very similar to the ones the police department do. And this is based on incident density. And what we look at is where are the incidents occurring within your community? And ideally, you wanna see that your fire stations are located proximal to where the incident density is, and in this case, they actually are. So what this tells us is that your incidents are evenly distributed and that your fire stations are actually very well located. The next thing I looked at is when are the calls happening. The calls that you have happening, nearly 60% of those are happening between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. That is a red flag for you because you have a fire company that has told you they have a problem coming to calls between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And more than half of your calls are occurring during that time. So that's one of the conversations that needs to start taking place. Um, and obviously that's a challenge because your volunteers tend to be at work during the day and not necessarily have that ability to go to those calls. So that's what this showed us. <coughs> Six minute travel time is an industry standard. We look at by the road network, um, ideally a fire company would want to be able to follow the road network that exists and get to everywhere within their jurisdiction within six minutes. And looking at this, you actually have the community well covered with the exception of just that little park area. So again, the stations are located in the appropriate places. ISO is the Insurance Services Office. They are the ones that establish national grading criteria for fire protection in communities. And they have some baseline recommendations. And the first one is that insurable structures, both residential um, of all types and sizes, should be within 1.5 road miles of an engine company. That's a place where there's a fire engine. And within 2.5 miles of an aerial company, which is a ladder truck. They also would like to see that those structures be within five miles of any fire station. And that's what gets them their fire protection rating. Next slide. And what you can see here with your engine companies, your engine companies are able to cover about 80% of your road network because of where they're located. So if you were ever at a point where you were looking to add an additional fire company, this would be a good map to look at and say, okay, where are we not making that coverage? And you know, obviously align that with your incident density to see you know, if that needed to be something taken into consideration. But at this point, you're in a good position as far as that stands. Ladder truck, you're a little bit smaller. You only have one ladder truck, so you're only looking at about 75% coverage, but still a really 
good part of your community is covered within that 2.5 miles and the ones that don't have that 2.5 miles are very close to having it. So your, your ladder truck is providing adequate coverage to your community. So when we look at Warminster, you are an ISO class four. ISO rates um, fire protection on a scale of one to 10, 10 being that you have no fire protection, one being the absolute best. So you're a four, and within Pennsylvania, there's 555 communities that have earned that designation out of a total of 2,300 plus communities within the Commonwealth. So you guys are in the top 30%. And the takeaway from this is your fire department is doing a good job. You have good service going on. Things are very positive as far as your fire department and the level of service they're providing. So, Here's the takeaways. Like I said, the firefighters are doing a good job. You have good fire departments. You have well-trained firefighters. When my partner and I were here for a few days, we spoke with anybody that would talk to us. We spoke with many of you. We talked with people that work for the community. We talked to the firefighters. We talked to residents that we saw walking around. And all people gave us the same answer. They're happy with the fire department. They're happy with the service. They like what's happening in this town. These guys are doing a very good job. Um, your stakeholders are content. The level of service, the, what they're getting is what they want. The problem here is, quantity, not quality. You have a quality service. Well, the issue now is, is how do we find a way to make sure that, that we can consistently deliver that quality service? So um, finance is always the bane of everybody's existence, and it's certainly the case with the firefighters. Um, I just wanted to just draw to your attention, when you look at the state firefighter relief funds, they're actively declining. And what's happening now is, if you look at the total revenue, each year these volunteer fire companies are forced to do the same or more work with less money. And this becomes a drain, especially when you're a volunteer, because who wants to volunteer to deal with a budget problem? Um, you know, basic human nature is people want to put their time and energy into places where they feel supported and wanted. One way to show that support is finances. So just in the background, be aware that their job is getting more difficult as time goes on because they don't have the same amount of money they had even last year. And every year, that continues to go down. So the bad news is there's no one size fits all answer for when do we need to hire firefighters. That is a community decision. Again, the people at the community need to come together and have that discussion. But what we can give you is some basic indicators of when it's time to start that conversation. And what we did for this report is we looked at five indicators for change that came from the International Association of Fire Chiefs. They have a red ribbon report that talks about transitioning from a volunteer fire department to a combination fire department to a paid fire department. And these are the five indicators for change that they recommend. Uh, community growth, aging community, reduced staffing, extended response times, and missed calls. And I will go through each of them and how they relate to Warminster. So when we looked at community growth, we looked at the census-based projections for your community, and we also looked at the municipal level population forecasts. And both of them agreed with each other. They're looking at a relatively flat population change. We're not expecting you to grow significantly. We're not expecting you to get smaller. In the next six years, it's reasonable to anticipate you're gonna stay pretty close to where you are. So that was one indicator, and the only indicator that said, you know what, no red flag here. Things are stable, it's okay. So we went through that one. The next one is community aging. And when we look at your population, in 2000, the average age was 37. In 2010, it was 42. 2017, your average age was 47. Your community is aging in place. If you go to the next one, we did a projection going forward, and we see that trend continuing. Our basic indicators are that your community is going to continue to get a little bit older. And the reason that matters with fire service is that older populations tend not to be physically capable and or able to become volunteer firefighters. So if you have volunteer fire companies now that are struggling with trying to find new volunteers, we can expect that that problem is going to be more challenging for them going future because they're going to have a smaller pool of people to draw from. So that is one indicator that we say that is a red flag. You have a problem, it's probably going to get worse. And we just talked about that. The next one is reduced staffing. So when an engine and a ladder or a rescue, whatever the vehicles go out on the road, they've all got a specific function that they're put there to perform, whether it's um, to bring a hose line and supply water, whether it's to vent the roof. They need adequate people to perform those functions. If we're getting vehicles out with one or maybe two people, that's not enough people to perform the function of that apparatus. So when we see that vehicles are consistently responding without the adequate number of people that they would need to do those jobs, that is a red flag. Uh, unfortunately, the data was an issue here. Uh, we had some issues getting numbers out of your dispatch center because things aren't tracked in a way that allowed us to pull that information out. What we were able to do is sit with the leadership of your fire department and say, this is a concern. It is happening. There are times that we're concerned about staffing. And both fire chiefs readily identified staffing as their critical issue within the fire department. So while I don't have quantitative data to support it because it wasn't available, we have all the indicators to say that this is definitely something you should be talking about. The next one's going to be extended response time. So when we look at national standards, you are right there where you need to be. You're about one minute and 38 seconds longer than what a national expectation is for these types of calls, which is well within the range. However, again, because of the way things are tracked, what I can't show you is a trend that says you were here and that you're getting longer with time. 
the conversations I'm having are leading me to believe that this is getting worse, not better, and that this is a conversation you should have because it's going to continue to become more extended in the response time. Then the last indicator is missed calls. That is when the fire company that's closest to the emergency does not actually go to the call. They miss the call and somebody else has to happen. And again, data is a limiting factor. Somebody is going to those calls, but it's not always the person that's closest or the one that you would want there to provide that first response. So again, with the <coughs> interviews, they told us, yes, there are times where that first vehicle is not getting to where it needs to be and somebody else is covering the call. So that's the fifth indicator and it's also a flag that the conversation needs to happen. So when we look at Warminster Township Fire Service as a whole, four out of the five indicators that the National Association of Fire Chiefs say indicate a need for a conversation about staffing, you've scored a four out of five. The only thing you were missing was that population and it's not getting smaller. The demand is still there, it's just not getting bigger. Um, what I want you to take away from this is that your fire service needs to start to grow and change and evolve. And those are the conversations that need to happen and that you need to effectively manage them. Change can happen incrementally as long as it's well managed and the right people are at the table. I, ideally, that would be part of a master planning process and a strategic planning <coughs> process. You would bring all of the entities together because you all need to operate township and the two fire companies and look at a long-term master plan. That is that the 10-year plan of what does Warminster want to be when we grow up? Do we want to sustain the volunteer system? Do you want to transition to paid and how do you want that to look? Once you've identified that and you've got some consensus on where do you want to be when you grow up, you can have your strategic plan and that's your three to five year plan that says these are the things we're going to do to get from here to there. Uh, and those are the conversations that need to begin <coughs> to take place. So when we looked at our report, we, we left you with some short, long and midterm recommendations just to give you a starting place. The first thing was the automatic aid agreements. You know, you're covering your calls internally right now because Hartsville is covering the Warminster calls during the day. The next round of help after that is your automa automatic and mutual aid agreements, which you do have in place, and that's where the next level of assistance would come if you weren't able to cover your own calls. You wanna make sure that those are up and running and that everything's working well there. We did suggest that you might wanna consider a two-day uh, member leadership collaboration combination um, training class. And, and the reason for that was that there's been a lot of change in people both on the township and the firefighter side. There aren't bad relationships, but we felt in many cases that there wasn't any relationship just because there were so many new people. And the conversations you're gonna need to have are gonna involve a requirement for a level of trust. So we felt that this two-day class that the IFC does is geared toward volunteer and combination fire departments, but what they do is they do a personality assessment and they would come in with the leadership teams of all the agencies and talk about how to deal with people to give them the information they need. If you have a finance-driven person, we need to make sure that person gets the money side of it when it's talked to them. If we have someone that's consensus building, we wanna make sure that person has the data that shows yes, everybody's in support of it. But just teaching people how to work with each other in a way that they can be effective would go a long way to helping facilitate the conversations that your community really needs to have. And then the last one is for you as a community to say, you know, what is the acceptable level of service here in Warminster? And if PA 1720 is a national standard that sets benchmarks, it's a great place to start the conversation. And then you as a community can decide if you want to go a little above or a little below that based on resources and what's available within your community. The next one to three years, your midterm recommendations. Again, we talked about the master planning, the strategic planning process. If you don't know what you want to be, you're never going to know if you get there. Um, we did suggest that in the interim, expanding the day-to-day -day duties of the fire marshal would make sense. You have a full-time staff member that you already have on staff with um, involvement in the fire department. And that position can be used to evolve and grow as time goes on. You know, as the volunteer fire companies aren't able to or need help with things, that position's there to help support them and, and really should probably be that point of contact to help facilitate changes as they occur. And then we talked about uh, another short-term option that we see in a lot of other townships is that if you have full-time people that are working for your town and they're already on staff salary, if they're willing to go and get trained to be firefighters and you can work out an arrangement within your community where you can release them from duty for a structure fire. Not for every call it happens, but that true emergency, rather than hiring them to be firefighters full-time, they could perform another function and be available to help when there's a true emergency. Maybe you want something you wanna consider. And then we look at uh, number four, it's going to be risk reduction programs. So there are some opportunities within your community because you do have the ability to hire people to come in. Quite honestly, your call volume is not such that a firefighter would be working eight hours a day and be busy all day. I, I would like to see better use of that time. So what we would suggest is having them as inspectors, public education technicians, we can work on community risk, we can train people in the community how to not need the fire department and to help keep themselves safe, but they would also be available to respond to those calls. So we suggested that you know that would be a way to handle that and kind of serve two purposes at once. And then um, everything we do is grounded in implementing best practices. So as you're having these conversations, we want to talk about just being aware that cancer is a huge issue and that the decisions you make should be done with an eye toward firefighter safety, protecting the people that are serving you and doing it in a way that we're going to minimize the risks of cancer because that's certainly one of the biggest issues that firefighters are facing these days. 
And then the long-term planning process, that's your three plus years, um, that master plan, you kept hearing me say it, but that is the conversation. You decide where you wanna go and how you're gonna get there. Um, and then outside of Warminster, you really need to take an active role advocating for programs at the state and federal level that will help support volunteers. They need your help, they need you to be their voices, they need you to come in and advocate for whatever it is you can do to help make it easier for them to volunteer. And then um, the last one goes back to your, your dispatch center, Bucks County um, Communications. We had a lot of issues getting the data. The best way to see if things are getting better or worse is to track the data. So as time goes on, certainly not your biggest concern, but to start working with them and finding a way to track the data in a way that you can pull out what you need and look at your trends and basically decide if you're moving in the direction that you want to go. So with that, I just want to you know, summarize with the fact that your fire companies have stood up to the challenges. The demand has continued to get more significant, and these guys have really done a great job making sure that those calls were answered, but that as a township, you're going to need to find a way to support them long term if you want them to continue to be able to do that. Um, and I would tell you that by investing in career firefighter positions, again, with those big discussions, that can be done in a way to sustain the volunteer fire department, support them at their time of need, and make it easier for them to volunteer when they can, which would encourage them to volunteer longer. And with that, I'd like to open it up for questions. All right. Who would like to lead off? I'll start with, um, right now we're operating off of volunteer firefighters. Mm -hmm. If we remain in status quo, we'll have volunteer firefighters. But to me, I th there's two obstacles that I see. One, you noted where we have an aging population, so that pool of volunteer firefighters gets smaller and smaller as the population as the population gets older and older. The second one, and I see Chris McDonald back here from Hartsville, we had a number of conversations, is the number of hours it takes to train to be a volunteer firefighter. And that's gonna be controlled at the state level. Frank, Fer say Frank Ferry's working on that, but I believe it's 200 hours mm -hmm. to be a fire firefighter. So there are two major obstacles that I see if we do nothing, that pool of volunteer firefighters is going to get smaller and smaller. So to me, all the hours are pointing towards a paid staff. Now, how we get there, I don't know. But it's something that this board does need to start talking about. I would agree. Well, I think that pretty much immediately now that the study is done, that the fire chiefs, the fire marshal, and the township staff should begin mm -hmm. long-term planning right away that we can come up with a plan together that's, that's, that we can have open discussion about once the staff and the fire chiefs get together. That's, I think, the direction we need to go immediately. I would also agree. <laughs> very, uh, very great uh, comprehensive plan that you put forth with, with the options that are available to us. Uh, we certainly want to support our fire department. They do an extraordinary job, and any resident here will tell you, you know, they go out of their way to, to help their community. And we know that we're going to have uh, problems in the, in the future uh, getting more volunteer farm. And so I agree we need to start discussions uh, to get some paid firefighters also to give them this, the volunteers the support that they need. Can you tell me more about this two-day class? Just going to ask that. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, it, it's a brand new class. It was just rolled out by the International Association of Fire Chiefs, and I do teach that for them around the country. And we come in um, by sending out a study. Basically, it's a little packet of information. We ask every entity in the room to submit a couple members that are command staff. So here I would like to see somebody from the township, a couple people, and then some of the commanders from the, vol the volunteer fire companies. And they do a personality assessment. And it's a very comprehensive seven-page report that tells you all about your tendencies. And I was surprised how accurate it was. It told me that I have a short attention span, that I talk very fast, that I jump <laughs> to conclusions. All these things I already knew, but they really nailed it pretty well. And what we do is we go through, and the first thing is self-awareness. You need to understand who you are, how you operate, and have those conversations. But then we need to teach people how to effectively work with each other so that they can provide the information that they need. So if I know that the township manager is dollar driven, I am not going to come in with a great idea without knowing how much it costs and giving them that information. If I know that the assistant is really worried about you know, the political environment and consensus, I'm going to make sure I've done an evaluation of the lay of land and I come in with the information that she needs to be able to make her decision. So what it essentially does is it teaches these people how to interact with each other and to give them the information they need so that we can all move forward in a, in a way that makes sense. And it's a two-day class, and it just gets those discussions going, and it builds bridges in places where you perhaps have two different entities, three different entities, and people that have changed over the years. It's a really good place to start those discussions. How long is the class? Two days. Two and days. It, it's two done by class. firefighters from predominantly volunteer fire department. We send in two fire chief officers, and it's geared for combination of fire departments, and it oh. talks about those transitions. Oh, okay. Thank class. you. I like, maybe not now, but I like to know what our fire departments think about that two-day class. Yeah. Well, Mitch, you want to come up? Right, right. Wait. Wait, <laughs> in a second, I'll call the chiefs up in a moment. Uh, just give me a moment. Um, 
I do want to. Yeah, do I want to allow the supervisors to finish first. Yeah, the, the, no, uh, it's to the chiefs. <laughs> but once we stop talking, that doesn't happen a lot. So we want to <laughs> we want to take advantage of when we shut up for a change. So go ahead, Brian. No, no right. pressure. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, the only thing I would just add, and I think this was uh, laid out very uh, well. Um, and I think this was clear, but just to make sure that it's clear for the people at home. Just caught me off guard. Um, uh, that when you hire, uh, if we hire um, uh, staff, it's not eliminating volunteers. It's, uh, it's a supplement. It's something that would add uh, people during the day, during those times that, that they're currently uh, suffering. And, of course, whatever the data shows. Um, I mean, I, I, I was just counting the years when I ran with Berwyn, which was 25 years ago, it shocks the heck out of me. But um, 25 years ago, we—that's what that's what Berwyn went through. Berwyn had uh, paid staff um, uh, during the day, so um, I, I would be looking forward to the information that comes out from these meetings. And I agree with uh, Mark and the rest of the supervisors that it, it needs to start sooner the better. And exactly, that is exactly the conversation you need to have. If you as a community want to predominantly have a volunteer fire department, you need to have that expectation, establish it, and every move you make needs to support that. And I will tell you that the department that I ran for 20 years, we saw an increase in call volume by 75% over the course of 20 years. We went to 3,500 calls a year, and we were answering that with eight full-time firefighters. I did not hire any additional full-time firefighters in that entire 20 years. I redeployed staff members. I was more careful in how I sent people to calls, and I did it in a way that made it easier for them to volunteer. Because at the end of the day, volunteering is not their primary role. These people have families, and they have jobs, and we need to help them be able to do that so that they can also have time to come and volunteer. And if we're pulling them away from their primary obligations, what we're going to end up doing is losing them all together. So we need to set up a system that makes it easy for them to do all of those things and to help them help you. In your career, uh, not just as when you were serving, but uh, with ECSI or ESCI, my apologies, um, have you have you witnessed a lot of communities go from where we're at to to the uh, to the hybrid model? Have have you seen? What I'm just curious is sort of what your thoughts are on how the process went in other communities that you've maybe seen this happen in. Yes, so um, I was in Montana last week, Frenchtown, Montana, and we're okay. doing the exact same thing. They have eight firefighters covering. 75 square miles um, and most of them are mountains so they're in a very similar position that you are uh, in Connecticut I had the same thing it's all about the communication and the trust mm -hmm. you know and I came from a community where I had three independent volunteer fire companies that didn't talk to each other initially mm -hmm. I had different color fire trucks on different sides of the town because they didn't want to be the same as the other guy so getting them all even in the same room was huge and that's why I talk about slow incremental plans you know okay. tell them what you're gonna tell them tell them and then tell them what you tell them don't surprise anybody everybody wants to be part of the plan they want to know they're valued and when you're having these conversations the volunteers to your point do need to know that you want to sustain them and you're here to support them and that you're not taking their job away so you need to lay those plans out and give people time to get used to them right. and keep an open transparent dialogue on that thank you was there any other questions from Ms. Harper I just agree that transparency is, is critical and we want to work together with our firefighters and us to find a good solution for the safety of our, our township and the safety of our firefighters and the safety of our residents. Thank you. My, my takeaway would be that they should be commended for the service that they're providing and really and truly anything you can do to support their efforts mm -hmm. will go a long way to helping the entire community. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Harper. Thank you. Thank I'd, you. Like, yeah, I'd like to uh, welcome up our fire chiefs now to comment uh, on the fire study or whatever. So gentlemen, please, the uh, mic is yours. Absolutely, thank you, Mary Ellen. Thank you, you guys did a great job and everybody at Esky did a great job. Um, no surprise, like we support this 110%. We've asked for this a long time ago. This goes back to Jim Kruger. Actually, we started to implement a plan. It just unfortunately fell apart before it really got put together like anything else financially. Uh, as a fire department, we recognize this. And the beauty of the transition, everybody around us for the most part has gone through this. Like this isn't new, maybe to you guys, but every department we run with is a combination just about. And there's good things and bad things with all of them. Sure, there's. Like any other department, there's issues. The beauty of our departments is we do get along great. It's not like we have neighboring departments that hate one another. We operate very similarly. We're always on the same page. They're helping us cover our daytime calls now. You know, we're running five, six, seven calls a day sometimes during the day where they were only running one every couple of days. But the problem we talked about, the burden is, every call is like 45 minutes of your life lost. Get to the firehouse, go to the scene, and it could be just a nothing alarm, but by the time you investigate, get your report, go available, go back, take your gear off, go to work, 45 minutes is gone. Leaving once or twice a month, the boss is good with that. Do it every day, and all of a sudden productivity goes down, and you just you can't allow it. We've seen it with guys. We had one guy who was leaving all the time, and we told him, like, 
stop coming to every alarm system. No, my boss is good. Conveniently, they gave him a different job where he couldn't leave. Um, they didn't tell him he couldn't go, he just got a lateral promotion. So it's tough, it's tough to find people during the day. It's tough to find people at night. It's getting tougher on the weekends. This is only going to get worse. I look at our population in our firehouse. Most of us are in our 50s now. I bet you half of our fire department's 50 plus. I'm not getting no younger. Pulling this hose gets harder and harder every year. You know, these young guys gotta keep doing it, but the numbers are dwindling. The fact that we put in all this senior housing has not helped the fire department. It's increased our call volume, and we're not getting members out of it. We can't even get older members to come sit and help do administrative duties, let alone do firefighting duties. And like she talked about, the training aspect of it, it's crazy. I mean, it's good that we're trained and we're doing a great job, but we just had a guy put an application in, did his first reading, his background check, they talked to him, went over all the training, pulled his application before the meeting, said he couldn't commit that much time. Another Philadelphia police officer moved in, wanted to be a fireman, because, you know, cops need heroes, too, so they want to be firemen. Uh -huh. Chief? Chief? Chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, you know, he put in and he Chief works nights, so the only available choice is for him to go during the day, and it's like a month long. Like, how do you commit that much time away from your family in such a short period of time? So it's challenging. It's challenging for us, and this isn't... It's Bucks County, it's Pennsylvania, it's the whole United States volunteers are doing this. So it's not like we have the problem, it's nationwide. And I'm glad this came out, I'm glad we can sit down and move forward. For us, we welcome this change. It's not like you have to shove it down our throats. There's been other townships where the township had to step in and push it down their throat. And I think that's where the problems are. Or when you have a couple departments in one township and they don't get along, that's where there's a lot of problems. Luckily, we're on the same page on everything. So that's like the least of the issues. It's how this gets implemented and you know, we wanna help steer the bus too and, and get to where we wanna be. So I think with the township and the two fire departments, hopefully we'll move in the right direction. But I think the immediate question is, looking at you guys, we keep talking one year, two year, five year plans. We need an immediate plan. You know, I'm not saying hire these people tomorrow, but we need to address this for next year's budget. You know, we talked earlier about tax increases and unfortunately that didn't go through. That's a big burden. Like, she said, every year we're getting less and less money. And I spend more time trying to figure out what we can buy and what we can't buy where I shouldn't have to deal with that. It, it should be, and not that we're spending money frivolously, but there's things we need to buy that we push off for the next year because we're getting less from everybody. Um, where, do, where do we go? A and that's the name of the game, to get some people hired in here and at least take that burden away from us. Let, do you have any questions for us? Uh, just to, just a recommendation i know we're getting into budget time for 2020 in the next two months and i know that the township manager meets with each department head to find out what their needs and all are i think he should be meeting with you as well more than welcome you should be treated in my opinion as a department head because you, you are a large department in our township i don't know if mr schuster caught that but i'm sorry i apologize i was oh. talking about <laughs> sorry but i know that, that you meet with each department head prior to budget assembling the budget for 2020 i think that the chief should be involved in the budget process and treated as a department head. Look, what are your needs? What can we do? What millage is, is going to be, need to be dedicated to the department? I mean, that's immediate need, in my opinion. Yeah, we can certainly have that conversation. Obviously, they uh, are treated a little bit differently because they're they're more like a single line item. We don't get into the, the specifics about what they're buying as any typical department does. But obviously, we can still have those conversations, and right. we're going to have those conversations. It's part of our long-range planning. That sure, as it to, should we be. We have to change what we're doing. And the beauty of it is we are financially sound in both fire departments. I mean, we've planned very well for our long-term plannings and, and saving and whatnot. So it's not like we're going to go broke anytime soon. It's just we're looking forward 10 years from now where we're going to be with relief going down when ladder trucks come due for replacement, engines come due for replacement. That's when the problems are really going to hit, when our air packs come due for replacement. All the money from relief that was allocated for that is going down drastically. And she said it's going to go down drastically. Just want to say that, um, as Mitch said, we agree with the report and we welcome this. We, we look forward to it and working with the township and, and trying to come up with a solution to the, the issue. When Mitch contacted me last year, uh, when they were having issues getting out and, and brought about having us run with them daytime 
all the time. When we looked at it at Hartsville Fire Company, we realized immediately that we're going to double our call volume. And that doubling of call volume is happening in that 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So now you're taxing those, those guys and it, it's, um, it, it is quite a burden when you're taking, a, 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 like Mitch said, a couple calls a week to run in 50, 50, 60 calls a month instead of running like 20 calls a month. Um, the guys that have to leave work and, and whatnot. So um, on top of that, on the training, as uh, is, is, uh, Mr. McPhillips brought up, that 200 hours is just basic training of a firefighter. That doesn't cover anything else. You gotta get into advanced classes and all that and it, it doubles and triples the amount of training that is required for all the firefighters. So um, was, as Mary Ellen's report said, that said firefighter too, if you saw a lot of in the report, what certification it suggests, that 200 hours is for firefighter one, all right? It doesn't include your VRT, it doesn't include your firefighter two, it doesn't include your engine company, ladder company ops, and, and all those classes, firefighter two is another close to 200 hours. So looking at the training requirements that, that we ask of our personnel, not to mention the additional training after that to get them qualified to drive these trucks and to operate the trucks. There's a lot more that goes into it, to all this, so. Any other questions for the chiefs? Chief. I'm part of the average. It makes the mm -hmm. average go up. <laughs> 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 um, I'd like to make you aware that the fire departments, in conjunction with Southampton and Ivyland, recently created a video. That video was to try to get young people to join the fire service, so at least consider it. It was shown at the middle schools, it was shown at the high school, it was shown at uh, Archbishop Wood. Uh, and the encouragement to try to get young people, 14 years of old, were allowed by state law to come in and train with us and get a taste of what's going on. Uh, we don't know how successful that is at this point, but they're not coming in the door like we would hope. But we also run a firefighter camp. And the camp this year is the 20th year we run firefighter camp. It's a joint project of Warrington and Hartsville and Warminster, and this year Warwick has joined us to try to get kids to come and take part in a firefighter camp to learn uh, basic firefighter skills, get a chance to ride on a truck, use the fire extinguisher, uh, roll hose, pack hose, play with the fire hydrant, do all those kind of things, wear the breathing apparatus. And what we're trying to do is get young people. We've been trying for years to get young people. We don't care where they come from. If they come to camp, we're great. And if they turn 16, we want them to go back to the station closest to their home. So as we can get that message out there, we're trying to recruit those young people to give it a try. Uh, we just had a young person that turned 18. He already had his skills, and he became a senior firefighter on his birthday, and he already had those skills, so he became a senior firefighter with the firefighter one, and he's ready to move on. So it can be done. We've all done it over the years because we all suffered the same thing. We always uh, had a family and all had a job, sometimes two jobs, and we all made it work. It can work. We just got to develop that uh, attitude in our young people. Thank you. Chief, Thank you. How, how old do the, uh, how old do the uh, kids have to be to go 14. to fire? 14. 14. 14. And uh, do you accept uh, men, uh, young men and young women? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Just for the yeah, public state, to know. State law limits us to 14, so we need to start there. Okay. And frankly, the physical skills are part of it. So we, we could take them perhaps younger and just do the camp thing, but they may not be strong enough to do right. basic Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Ed? Ed, Ed the dates of fire camp. Oh. It's Wednesday nights. Normally would be July 4th, but this year is the 4th, so it's going to be 10th, uh, 17th, 24th, and 31st. They can come one night, three nights, whatever they can come, try it out. Uh, we got a whole gang of people to try to introduce them to those skills. Guaranteed we're going to have some fun. Get a little dirty, bring your old clothes, don't wear your, your good, good clothes, come and get dirty with us. Greg, is that posted on our website for our residents to see? I don't believe it is, but if it's sent over, I can definitely get it up there. Hey, whatever media we can get out for you. The website. The website. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Joe has access to all that. So, yes, we can. We can put it on the township website, too. Yes. Yeah, we can. Oh, okay, oh, it is? great. All right, yeah. all right okay. great. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to turn it. Oh, any other questions for the Chiefs? 
So, this one, so yeah. as it stands right now, we have surrounding townships with paid firefighter forces. Every once in a while, they'll come into Warminster. Right now, it's Upper Moreland, Horsham, Warrington, and Northampton are all career staffed. So the only department surrounding us that's not career is Upper Southampton. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, and uh, Horsham's 24 seven, Northampton's daytime, but they're now implementing, they're probably gonna be the first 24 hour paid fire department in our area in Bucks County. They're hiring more staff right now. They have a career daytime chief, uh, lieutenant, and they have multiple firefighters and they're gonna be hiring more. Horsham, Chris could probably say better, but they're, uh, they have paramedic firefighters 24 seven in both their stations. Uh, Warrington has daytime staffing from six to six also, and they're firefighter inspectors. So you go right around, like this is a new Upper Moreland, same thing, firefighter inspectors, they man their station 12 hours a day also during the week, and there's talk of them starting to go seven days a week also. So, and Upper Moreland's been doing it, and Horsham for over 20 years now. Northampton's probably in the past five, and Warrington's a little less than that. So we're all there, and we run as many, if not more, fire calls than them. Montgomery County side, Horsham and Upper Moreland, well, Horsham runs ambulance also. Upper Moreland, you know, supports their ambulance running QRS calls. So they're doing other things also besides fighting fire. And they're helping maintain the equipment. Do the, the other problem is, besides all the training, we have to maintain all this equipment. Come up other nights besides drill nights. Stay late after fire calls to keep all this equipment maintained. When you hire these people, not only are they helping do all that, and do all the community outreach, do the pre-planning that's very hard to do when you're a volunteer fire department because we can't get into these buildings during the day. We don't have the manpower for firefighting, let alone pre-planning. So there's a lot of other functions just for the fire department besides putting out fire and answering fire alarms they could do, let alone all the inspections they can do. So they will stay busy, let alone helping Joe with all his other tasks that he can't get to. Thank you. All right, thank you, Chiefs. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Mr. Schuster, uh, can you just comment on what our next steps are? Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think what I'm hearing is a uh, consensus from the board that they realize the situation that we're in right now and that uh, it's inevitable that paid firefighters will be brought on board. Um, should be, it's worth mentioning that out of 2,500 or so municipalities uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, we're the 32nd most populous. So we're, we're, we're a large municipality. This should not come as a shock that we're heading in this direction. The question then becomes, how do we implement it? When do we implement it? Uh, how is it funded? So for next steps, I'd like to sit down and have further conversations with the chiefs, come up with that action plan, uh, and bring it before you at the future meetings uh, to have that discussion. Uh, as Mary Ellen pointed out, you have to figure out what we want to be when we grow up, and we have a little taste of that tonight, I believe. Uh, we have to flesh that out, and we have to have further conversations. Uh, but I think we're we're all have a consensus on on what path to take. All right. Thanks. So. Anything else from the board? Mm -hmm. All right. It's. I think it's a good plan. All right. So. All right. Well, we'll close the book on this presentation now. Ms. Harper, thank you. Chiefs, thank you. Ed, thank you. Um, let's move on now to our next uh, presentation. I'd like to invite to the podium uh, Karen Whitney and Karen McNair, who are going to do a presentation on Warminster Community Park. Thanks a lot, guys. Chief Shapiro, I'll see you in the Wildwoods over the summer, all right? That's a date. Good evening. Um, I'm Karen Whitney, the Parks and Recreation Director for Warminster Township. With me tonight is Karen McNair from Gilmore, Gilmore and Associates and Kathy McDonough, who is the Assistant Director and also the Grant Administrator for all of our grants in the park system. Um, what I'm here tonight to discuss is I just want to bring you up to date with what's going on in, the grant, in our grant program in Warminster Community Park. I'm going to start with a brief history for Warminster residents who are not aware of all the things that have happened in the last, what, 15, 20 years? 15 years. Okay, so um, in Warminster Community Park in 1996, uh, NHCC, as it was known, the Naval Air Development Aircraft Division was closed through the BRAC process. Um, in 2001, we received Warminster Community Park as a public benefit conveyance from the Department of Interior as a federal lands to parks program exchange. 
it was worth about $15 million, and it was given to us for free as a public benefit conveyance. Um, in 2001 and 2000 to 2003, while Ann's Choice was be being built, um, Erickson donated the construction of the entry drive, the ponds, some of the landscaping um, for a total of about $1.8 million. Um, that $1.8 million we were then able to use as a match to get some grant funding. So, um, um, in, so in, two, in 2003 we opened Warminster Community Park to the public. It was very bare, there were no trees, we basically had a runway and a playground. Um, that was kind of it, but it was open and people could use it. And we um, used the external perimeter trail that was the old security trail as our first trail for people to use bike and hike and all that stuff, so it was really great. Um, between 1999 and 2015, um, the Parks and Recreation Department was able to uh, work with various organizations, state and local. Um, we were able to get about $2.7 million in grant funding um, which was our phase one and phase two of the park development. And there's a list up there that you can see that we've put in. We did the master site plan, put in a pavilion, the playground, the dog park, uh, maintenance facilities, soccer fields, and, and additional stormwater and all the trails and stuff. Then from 2006 to 2016, um, the Parks and Rec Department was also able to um, get about 1,200 trees, which we have put in there. So now we have a definite tree it, there's a presence of trees um, in the last two years since 2000, well, the last four years since 2016. I can't add. In the last three years since 2016, we've added probably another 400 trees. So we keep adding trees as we move forward. Most of them are coming to us through um, either Memorial Trees or the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society. They have a grant program that we're able to do. Um, in 2015 to 2017, um, we kind of had the perfect storm and the Park and Rec Department was able to garner about $2.9 million in grant funding to go into phase three. Um, Amanda, would you? Great, thank you. Um, as you can see, we were able to gather different types of grants, use them as matches against each other um, to be able to move forward with these projects. So the first two grants that we got were the Bucks County Municipal Open Space Grant. Um, this was the funding that was provided for open space by all municipalities in the county. Um, it's $647,000. Uh, that money we were able to use as a match for the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. We got a $500,000 grant from them. Um, in 2012, we were able to get a redevelopment assistance capital grant program in the amount of $1.7 million, and that came um, with the assistance of State Representative Bernie O'Neill. Uh, the Board of Supervisors then approached all of the local developers that were working on the projects at Leary School, Longstreth School, and um, the old rec center, and th they offered to donate $317,000. Friends of the Park is also out fundraising for us. So they've had several fundraising events, and they're going to donate $20,000. We have money in our tree escrow to bring in additional landscaping and par the Park and Recreation Fund. Um, the RACP project at this point, which is that redevelopment assistance capital program, um, right now we're looking at to put in a new pavilion and restrooms, Bristol Road entry access, which would provide entry access permanently off of Bristol Road, which is something we'd like to do, but not allow people to access through the entire park, which I know that was something the board did not wish to have happen. Uh, it includes the lighting, multi-purpose fields, the splash pad, and we're gonna recycle our irrigation and use it on our ball fields. Landscaping, um, we're also going to include a playground, but that will be an alternate for the RACP bid. Uh, for the DCNR and Bucks County Municipal Open Space Program, uh, we're doing an ex a, a professional sized soccer field with expanded parking. Um, we are taking out that PV, the old um, fencing that is around the park that makes it look kind of like a prison, um, and we're going to put in beautiful PVC white, a pretty similar to what is across the street at Northampton. Um, we're going to runway, rip up pieces of the runway and, and install landscaping so that it doesn't just look like a straight runway but has more of a green park type feel. Um, and that project also contains multiple alternates which would be basketball courts and bocce and volleyball. Um, so those are kind of the basics for that project. Um, the next uh, slide is just the details of the park. This is kind of what the park will look like when it is built out. Um, as you can see, we have kind of left the east side of the park pretty 
the same natural environment that we currently have. We know that we're trying to find a balance between active and passive um, in that park, and so we really would like to keep the natural areas as natural as possible. Um, you've noticed we've kept the, the one set of woods that kind of runs through the middle of the park and um, have tried to work the fields, the stormwater, and all the trails kind of around that project. Let me go to the next one. Um, this is what I was just talking about. We are not, we're looking to transform our sport quadrant, which is the quadrant that is borders Bristol Road and Newtown Road across from Monroe Park, um, not take over the natural area that's on the east side of the runway. Um, I'm going to turn this part over to um, Karen McNair. Uh, Karen is the one who did the engineer's opinion of probable cost, which helped us determine which pieces would fit into which grants. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, in preparing the opinion of probable cost, what we did is we took measurements off the plans that we prepared and have been already approved by both PennDOT for the Bristol Road access and by the DEP for all of the improvements, ENS controls and the stormwater management that we need for those improvements. Um, so in doing that, we came up with just over $2 million for the RACP project and the playground just under $200,000. The DCNR project would be under $1.5 with about $340,000 for um, the alternates. So in total, that would be about 99.9% .9 of the available funding for the RACP-based project and the DCNR-based project, and just over $4 million if you added in the alternates as well. Um, but what those numbers include is all of the construction plus a 10% contingency, so that's in case there's overages or if a contractor bids higher than our opinion of probable cost, there is some space in there for that. It also includes 5% for engineering, observation, construction management, and then a small amount for ads built plans that are required by the DEP's permit. Oh, and I guess I should also mention, we do have some savings in there because Public Works has agreed to help perform some of the labor. So there is um, working together with the township that they have been able to save some money if they can perform the labor. Um, one of the members of the Board of Supervisors asked us to what, what this is going to cost as we move through the process and um, so we decided to do a summation for the estimated millage increases. Um, the first one would address the structural de deficit for the Park and Rec Department. Um, it's about $102,000 at the end of this year, though we think it will be under that. Um, at, that would be 0 .32 mills, about $8 a household um, per year. Uh, the increased operating expenses is 1.18 or $379,000. This is um, all of the additional personnel, the additional equipment, um, the infield mix. I mean, pretty much everything soup to nuts to be able to maintain this and keep the park system running. And the third piece is the, uh, is the debt service expense. Uh, this is the debt service that we would incur based on the general obligation note that the board uh, approved in 2017. Um, we are estimating, even though that was a $7 million um, general obligation note, we only are using $3.5 million. Um, one of the issues with these grants is these are reimbursed grants, so you must spend all the money up front and then be reimbursed by the state agencies who are providing them. Um, so based on that, uh, we estimate that the approximate annual debt would be about 250 k that brings your total to 2.29 mills, which is about $60 a year <coughs> per average household based on um, about a $250,000 assessment. Projected timeline. Ooh, it's going to roll. <laughs> OK, so um, our deal with the projected timeline is uh, we estimate that when we get through all of the um, bid documents, have them approved by the finals, approved by the state agencies. Um, we estimate that we can begin construction um, sometime around fall of 2019, um, which would be really good. Um, and then through fall and winter of 2019, through June of 2021, um, we have a whole, basically it's, we're going to start with basic construction, do earth moving, all of those things, and move through to get the project completed in 2021. Um, what, at this time, what we're asking from the Board of Supervisors is that you approve the authorization to advertise bids for this project um, as soon as they are ready and approved by the state offices that oversee these grants. 
something happened. <laughs> very creative. <laughs> there you go. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Chairman, I've, I have several. Uh, let me start being that we're talking about going out for bid. This will go out for bid under one scope of the work, correct? I'm, I'm going to let, I'm going to let Karen. Karen, could you answer that yes. one for me? I believe it does. It's, so what we would do is, um, I would separately bid the RACP project from the DCNR project because there's okay. separate bidding requirements that they both have, and okay. to try and combine them both would be very difficult and I think very confusing yeah. for the contractors. So those would be separate bids. And then the purchasing handbook also requires separate bids for plumbing, mechanical, and electrical work. So we would follow the requirements for public. So bidding. they would all be prime contractors then? There, so there's a prime contract, but there's separate contracts right. for, for those, right. yes. Okay, because where I'm going with this is we have a responsible contractor ordinance, and I believe that that, that ordinance will be applied to this project. Yes, it would be applied. I believe it's anything over three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So for the large projects, it would be it would depend how much um, it would cost for electrical plumbing for that work, whether or not that would fall under it. But the main projects, yes, they would certainly fall under that category. Okay. All right. So we, I guess we cross that bridge when the bids start coming in that, that they're certified under the ordinance to to accept right. their bids. So what we do when when we anticipate that the cost might be close to or exceed the $350,000, we always include that in the bid document so that the contractor is aware of it. Right. And if they reach that threshold, they have the requirements that they need to be able to meet the ordinance requirements. Yeah, because we reworked the ordinance a couple of years ago where you basically have to be certified at time of bid. It used to be that, that the documents would go on display for 90 day, or 30 days, and we reworked it a few years ago that you basically have to be certified under that ordinance at time of bid. Right. Correct? So that, I, that, yes, that's all included included in the contract documents so anybody who's bidding or interested in bidding will be well aware of those requirements okay that that's that that would save us from having to toss bids out because someone's not qualified and rebid and right right okay right. that's the intent okay so I, I had some stuff for Karen now if we if we can and then I'll be no, I'll move on I'll let someone else can we go back to the financial piece sure yes please Okay, so what we're looking at right there is we're projecting a hundred thousand dollar deficit in park and rec this year. Projected probably won't, may, hopefully won't hopefully come. Hopefully won't come to that. Yes. Right, but yes. we're definitely going to have a deficit. That's how we're definitely going to have a deficit. Mm -hmm. right. So the question is, I guess it's a question for the board: is that if we're going to send this out for bid, we have to be committed to these millage increases. I know we don't take action on millage increases till November, December. But we have to be committed to, to this or this can't go out for bid because we simply can't afford it. Now, we're getting all this work for free. The, the debt service piece is money that we borrow. When we get the money back from the state, we pay it back. It's a pass through. But the, the park and rec millage is, is actual millage because we have to pay the soft cost on this, correct? Correct. We have to pay the engineering cost. Correct. Engineering the, and design. And design. But the rest is free. So, I mean, you're getting millions of dollars worth of work for pennies on the dollar if you look at the slight millage increase. And then it has to be maintained, and you're understaffed as it is. I, I totally understand that, but it's just a discussion we need to have before it goes out for bid. It's, a, it's always been, you know, construction is one thing, but cost of maintenance is sure. something else. You have a whole end of the park there that you've never had staff on before, right. and it's a lot. The pavilion, right. the one pavilion alone is a lot. I know it's a lot of right. maintenance. But, I mean, the, the board has to be committed to this before it goes out for bid, or we simply can't send it out for bid. Because if we send it out for bid and there's no increase in millage of park and rent, what, what happens then? We're already running a deficit here. Right. All right. I know I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> right. I mean, I think I think I common think, questions. Yeah, I mean, the only comment I'll make on that is, uh, we we're gonna have to do something. So that's what I think. Um, a lot of our uh, everything we've been doing for the last year with respect to looking at long-term plans and things of that nature. Uh, there's a lot of tools on the tool belt. Uh, hopefully, that we'll be able to go to. So um, it's just a matter of what tool. No, and I, I've, I've, I've been vocal this year that I expect at the end of this year to have to vote for a combination or one of a tax increase, an asset sale, uh, reallocation of fees, something like that, in order to cover certain things, and this is going to be one of them. So I, I agree that, you know, I agree to the time is now with the, with the park. Oh, yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to see these things underway. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel. And I'm willing to commit. So, and I know Karen. I know you've spent years 
on this. This has been in process as long as I've been here, and I've been here seven years now, plus on the park board with you for several years. This has been in planning for years, and it's terrific. I mean, they're great improvements to our park, great for our property values, great for families to come use. And, and in fact, I was talking to Christina Wood from Warminster Baseball today. When we put the baseball quadrant in, we're going we're to be able to attract local or regional tournaments and things like that into our park that we don't have right now. Correct. So they're tremendous improvements, so tremendous. And Karen Holsizer, I would still call you Karen Holsizer, Mrs. McNair. <laughs> But thank you, too. I know you spent a tremendous amount of time She's on this. She's been incredible. Tr and, and, and to our friends from Gilmore, a tremendous amount of pro bono time, yes, too, I might you, add. Thank you, Gilmore. I might add, they have. <laughs> thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen and Karen. Thank thank Mr. Schuster. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So there is an action item associated with this. Um, the bid documents are not in their final form yet, simply because we're still waiting to hear back from the state. In order to not delay this project any further, what we're asking is uh, you grant approval to advertise the bid. What we would do is once uh, we get the bid documents finalized, I would send them out to you with a week or two to go ahead and mull over. And if there was any objections or any concerns, we could certainly delay to a, a future meeting. Uh, but I'd like to get that authorization now because we don't want to delay anymore. We really want to be uh, much farther along in this process. We want to have these documents out beginning of the year, uh, but we just, you know, we're on hold right now because of the state. So, what kind of uh, motion would be? A motion, to, a motion to authorize the advertisement uh, for the Warminster Community Park uh, bids. Anyone wish to make that motion? So moved. A second. second. All right. Um, any uh, questions or comments from the board further? No? I think it's a great plan. It's good. I know many, many people visit that park. It's beautiful. I go there myself. I think it's something that needs to be done, and, and I'm glad we're supporting it. And I'll be really, really glad to see that fence go. <laughs> that is such yeah, an eyesore. Yeah, such yeah, an yeah. eyesore. Especially when you got, you're driving down Bristol and you look to the left <laughs> and you look to the right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a huge. Um, I, I will say, uh, just to touch on like Warminster Day, for example, um, I mean, everything that, that you guys have been doing uh, with the Parks Department and the Township um, with drawing attention to this park, I mean, even in the short time that, that, uh, that we've been on the board um, and that we've been going there, that I've seen a difference. I mean, just in war with Warminster Day, uh, Warminster Day between one year, uh, you know, from last year to this year, I thought it was a pretty remarkable difference. So um, I know especially a Splash Park, you're going to have a lot of interested <laughs> young children that are going to want their mom and dad to get them in the car and take them up there, including my two. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Uh, to the action of uh, authorizing to advertise, is there any question or public from the comment? Comment from the public. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, yeah. Bless you. Oil Grand Avenue. Bless I have a question for Carrie. Um, you said the average assessed value of the homes is 250000 It's 25000 does that throw off your numbers or no? I, I, I think I can answer that. So the average assessment is approximately 25, I believe it's around 25,400, yes. but it, we use a, um, uh, a common level ratio of 10.4%. So the market value, the average market value would be about 250,000. Okay, so the market, okay, market yeah. value, because I was confused. Sorry, okay. sorry, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Ms. Boyle. Yes, ma'am. Quick question or comment because um, we're depending on these grants for this stuff. So the mm -hmm. time is to act now because I think some of those grants might expire if we don't use them. Is that right. correct? So we got to keep that in mind that they expire. So and we, the one was on the books for quite a long time. Yeah, so we yeah. just, I just want to make sure that everybody remembers that. And yeah, that one we've been kicking around for six, seven years now. I know, and it, it's going to expire if we yeah. don't do it now. Right. Thank you. And when, when you approach, please give your name and address. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Teneri, 725 Locust Road. Thank uh, you, sir. I'm happy to hear you using the RCO on this Warminster project. Mm -hmm. And when the bids go out, I'd just like to see that maybe we lo you know, use local sources uh, for, for the project, preferably union, if not, you know, right. people that you know, live in this area. 
Yep. I, I mean, I can speak to that just yeah. briefly. It'll be governed by the uh, the responsible contractor ordinance, but I don't believe that gives any preference to local people. I so, understand that. So it would well, have to be governed by that that ordinance. But aside from that, it'll it'll the ordinance will apply. Yes. When did the money jump up so high? <laughs> it went from what fifty thousand to three hundred thousand. It was a hundred. Um, we changed it what three years ago. It, it, it was about three years ago. Two thousand eight yes. was fifty thousand. That was a hundred. It was a hundred. Yes. I mean, because I got the copy here, it says fifty. That was a, that was a Did it increase from 50 to 100 yeah, and then again? At some point. It yeah. was 100 when I arrived here. Right. Okay. Not, well, and, I mean, and this that was, one here says it's a model. It says 2008 because... Yeah, it's just we, we changed, I guess, three years ago now. Yeah, because at, at that time, I don't know if you were paying attention at that time, and I'm, I'm, I'm a 35-year union member of Building Trade, so well, I, I'm I, couldn't, four, I'm 40, I, so. I couldn't agree with you more. Right. But it, it, it's, it's form that it was, its previous form, that, function, that um, ordinance was seriously malfunctioning. It was. And it was, it was costing the township a lot of money and a lot of headache. So we had to redo it, and we feel that it's it's set right now that it'll work for everyone. Okay. Uh, like I said, we'll see what happens when it goes out for a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comment or question from the public on this matter? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Carries 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Karen and Karen. Thank, Thank you, Karen and Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Karen and Karen. All right. We are now up to land use matters, public hearings, and ordinances. Tonight we have land development 2019-04. Preliminary final uh, approval for 911 York Road. I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Iannosi at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Is council here no. for the applicant? Just wait. Okay. We'll wait for uh, council. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Oh, good. Thanks. I think it's just a minor. Historically, did he ever read these yeah. things? Why don't we? Record? Why don't we, instead of this? Why don't we take a quick five-minute recess while we get everybody in the room? So, okay. Sounds so. good. Place in good shape, man. It's looking really good. Wet, wet. All right. She's in training. Oh, really? Let's call the meeting back to order. Okay. Again, we're now discussing land development 29 2019 04, 911 York Road. Uh, the floor belongs to Mr. Inozzi, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll turn the floor over to applicants' council to give us a a brief summary and then we'll move in with the approval resolution for the board's consideration. Thanks. Uh, I'm Ed Murphy. To my right is Kevin Riley from uh, the applicant. Uh, I think you know both of us and you know the project that we're here tonight to discuss. Uh, about 16 months ago, uh, Mike Meister and Kevin entered into an agreement to uh, purchase the property, which is the subject of the application, and about 14 months ago, we had our first meeting with the township staff to introduce the concept of the uh, mixed-use development that uh, has been the subject of multiple public discussions since then. Uh, we first met with your Economic Development Committee and then with this board about uh, uh, 13 months ago and introduced the sketch, made everyone aware that in order to implement the plan would require some zoning modification. and working with staff, it was concluded that the best and most efficient way to accomplish that would be to do a retirement community overlay in the R2 district, which is where the property is located. So we spent the last six months of last year and the beginning part of this year working on that overlay, which your planning commission recommended in December of last year and which this board approved uh, after advertisement in January. Uh, we spent the last six months uh, engineering a plan. We've gone through uh, two reviews from your township consultants. Uh, first review was after our initial submission and then we made a revised submission and then gotten more recent review letters which I believe everyone is familiar with and two weeks ago we met with your planning commission and received a favorable recommendation of preliminary final land development plan approval. So that brings us to tonight. Um, What's in front of you is that preliminary final land development plan uh, for the 
CADIS assisted living facility and the uh, 24 townhomes that Mike and Kevin will be responsible for constructing. And if you'd like, uh, Kevin can run through quickly just some of the highlights of uh, both the, the, uh, the townhomes, but also a quick overview of the assisted living facility. As we have at every meeting in the past, uh, Eric Ryder and Adam Tiller from CADIS uh, are here in the audience and can answer any other questions that haven't been asked previously, uh, but they Every meeting that uh, we've had, uh, Adam and Eric have come up from Texas and participated. So they're here again this evening. So Kevin, if you want just a real short overview before we get to the uh, approval resolution. Good evening. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, I, I'm happy to report that the plan has not changed at all since we met um, to do the overlay ordinance. Um, we took care of some technical comments, but we have not changed the layout uh, for the neighbors in attendance. I wanted to let them know that as well. Um, the, we're talking about 263 York Road at the intersection with Norristown Road. Um, we're going to make the fourth leg of Norristown Road out there. We're going to add sidewalk all along the frontage of York Road where it's uh, not uh, in an existing addition, so we can now travel north and south on York Road. Um, we're proposing uh, the CADIS building, which is assisted living, independent living, and memory care. It's 156 total units in this building. Um, in the back, we have 24 townhomes that will be age restricted, 55 plus, um, two story models, two car garage, two car driveway, I'm sorry, possibly one car garage, two car driveway, two story model with a master on the ground floor. Um, stormwater was concerned from neighbors. We're managing the stormwater both off-site. We're taking all of Yorktown Village stormwater um, into the southern basin. We're then routing it through to an, an above-ground basin on the Caddis property, and also, which doesn't show here, an underground basin on the Caddis property. And then we're discharging. We are uh, reducing the storm frequencies. Um, we are uh, taking 20 acres of stormwater area and treating it and slowing it down where we only have a 10-acre site. Um, in the back of the project, we met with the folks on Mueller Road, um, and we ended up moving the project a little further away from them. We have a nice buffer here, an existing open space that we're not going to uh, impact. That's nearly an acre of open space here. Uh, we also talked with the neighbors on Mueller. I believe that the consensus is that they don't want a six-foot vinyl fence. They're looking for a six-foot uh, black aluminum fence, something along this lines. We, this is another one of our projects. Um, I believe that they, they like the character of that. They, they may say differently, but I believe that's the feedback we received. And then we'll be placing landscape tree and bushes in front of that fence. Um, and I, I think I could just close public water and sewer, of course. We worked through we're with uh, WMA. We've been working with PennDOT. We've been working with DEP. We're working on all of our outside approvals. They all seem to be imminent. Um, we would like, to, if we're able to get preliminary final approval tonight, we'd like to work on resolution compliance and uh, start construction as soon as possible. It will be built in one phase, all of the site work, um, both the CADIS section and the county builder section. Um, the townhouses may lag uh, an extra construction season, but CADIS will go vertical immediately. But um, all of the improvements will be made uh, together. We're hoping that that could be late summer or early fall of this year. Um, and lastly, I'd just like to show the CADIS uh, elevation drawing. This is the building that they're proposing. Um, I think it's very attractive. Um, I'm actually thrilled with it, to be honest with you, being a partner with them. Um, they are showing four, it's a four-story building along York Road and only along York Road. And then it drops to three stories in the back and, and each side. So uh, the CADIS guys are committed to this architecture. They're actually finalizing their architectural plan um, in hopes to send it out to bid this summer as well. Uh, the administration has provided us with a draft of the approval resolution that has been developed since our most recent planning commission visit. And uh, I don't, I'll defer to Amanda and Bob if you want to talk about the details of that. But, the draft that we have been provided is acceptable to us. It's accurate. It reflects the various conditions that have been negotiated through the last 10, 12 months with the staff and the administration. So, uh, Does the board have any questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Dan? Last time you were here, we talked about a meeting with the residents. You guys did just that. You met with the residents. You satisfied the fence. 
they're, they're okay with the fence. And who picked out the fence? Well, when we talked, I, I gave the residents a few different <laughs> options. Okay. And uh, I then Amanda quarterbacked it, and she's okay. let me know that, that that's the fence they want. So hopefully they agree to that. I see tonight. a couple of residents in the back raising their hands, so I think <laughs> okay. they so so picked out the fence. Right, right. So yeah. it is six foot tall. Uh, they wanted to... The, the feedback we got is that they, they still want to see nature and, and see the, the, the plants and the trees back there. So that's, it, I think it's a very attractive fence as well. So they're satisfied with that. They're satisfied with the stormwater management practices they're going to be put in place. Okay. Yep. And then um, traffic. Can we go over traffic one more time? Sure. We're working with PennDOT right now. We propose two access points, um, existing signalized intersection at Norristown Road um, and what PennDOT has required. We had a long back and forth with PennDOT during the traffic study phase, and we've now submitted to the uh, HOP improvement plans. They want widening, so there's a dedicated left-hand turn lane in both directions, um, both on Norristown and on um, our entrance. Um, so we're gonna widen a bit on the north side of Norristown Road in order to make that happen. And um, it all stays within the right-of-way. We don't need right-of-way for property owners. And we have a very wide driveway on our side in order to make that happen too. It's actually one of the waivers that we need, but PennDOT wants to see that, that type of uh, access. And then we're proposing full access on the Southern driveway as well. Um, as you know, there, there's gaps here because of the traffic signal. Um, and but what we, is really special about the project is we have a reciprocal easement agreement between the two properties, whereby both property owners and visitors can choose which access they want to use. So if it's busy time and, it, and it's you know busy on York Road, they can travel up to signalized intersection and wait for their turn to, to make the left out. Um, so th th that's the current proposal. Kevin, are you required to put a D-cell lane in by PennDOT? PennDOT has not asked for a D-cell lane no? yet, no, hmm. no. Can you put one they, in? They haven't, had, put one in anyway? <laughs> they haven't had their first review of the HOP plans. That's due in the next week or two. Uh, but in the traffic study, it wasn't warranted, and they, oh. they didn't ask for it. They asked for their improvements that they wanted based on the traffic study, and that wasn't and warranted. They're, yeah, they're usually pretty stickler, so if they're yeah. not requiring it. They, no, and we have a wide shoulder out there, too. We have an huh? eight-foot wide shoulder. Huh? Um, a quick question about the intersection. If you're coming out of Norristown, uh, right now there's, a, there's no, uh, no turn on red. Uh, sign it there so you can make the right turn if you can make the right turn you people make the right turn would that change that's a good question brian i'm not sure um the traffic signal plan has been completed uh i'll get that answer for you okay because um, there is split phasing things like that the traffic engineer goes over um i think there's dedicated left turn time so they probably cannot turn right on red yeah. okay. but I'll, I'll get you an answer on that okay thank you i have one question uh with the height of the building do we, do, are our fire, does anybody know the answer to this? Our fire trucks, do their hosts, can they reach the top of that building? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, well that was, that was our fire marshal in the back saying yes, okay. but, but these plans do go through a review uh, okay. to make sure that occurs. I just wanted occur. to be sure about that. Yeah, yeah. Back, yeah. I mean, Joe, you did a plan review, correct? I thought I saw it in here. Yeah. Right. Can you, can you? Hey Joe, come on up. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. No good deed. He's happy to do it. Yeah, I review for access and mm -hmm. for water supply and for um, just different strategies and tactics for how fire apparatus are going to get in there and, and go in there if there's an emergency. Okay. Fire lines, getting fire lines up in there that we're going to be able to get them up. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much, Joe. All right. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, uh, the board has prepared their conditional preliminary final. No. Oh, excuse me. We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're going to, what we typically do is, uh, just so everybody in the room knows, is what we typically do in order to open up the public comment is we, we make a motion, and then once the motion's been made, then, then before any vote takes place, then we open it up to the public comment. So it's just a mechanism to open up. So I apologize. Sure. No problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this resolution, I'll put it up for a motion, and then they'll open it up for comment. So the board has prepared their conditional preliminary final land development approval resolution. It reads in pertinent part as follows. Be it resolved that the board of supervisors grants applicant conditional preliminary final approval of its land development application, LD 1904, to construct a retirement community which is permitted by right in the township's RC overlay and subdivide the property into two lots. Lot one 
will be uh, 5.62 acres and lot two will be 4.5 acres with approximately 2.241 acres of open space on the approximately 10.12-acre uh, property located at 911 York Road within the township's R-2 residence zoning district within the RC community overlay. Property is currently vacant. Proposed improvements on Lot 1 include a retirement community facility with 60 assisted living units, 72 independent apartment units, and 24 memory care units, all of which are permitted sub-uses of a retirement community in the RC overlay. Additional improvements on lot one include a drop off and loading area, parking areas, associated drives, and stormwater management facilities. Access to lot one is from a proposed driveway to York Road. Proposed improvements on lot two include 24 independent attached dwellings, which is a permitted sub use of the retirement community in the RC overlay. Additional improvements on lot two include parking areas, associated drives, and stormwater management facilities. Access to lot two is from a proposed driveway to York Road. The property will be served with public water and sewer. This conditional preliminary final approval is subject to number one, applicant accepting the conditions in writing within 10 days of this resolution's date, and two, satisfying all of them to the township satisfaction prior to the final plans recording. And those conditions are as follows. Complying with all applicable township review letters, including the township's traffic letter, the county planning commission letter, the township engineer's letter, the township zoning officer's letter, the township emergency management services letter, and the township land planner letter. Number two, signing the township's required land development documentation prepared to the satisfaction of the township solicitor, including a land development agreement and a stormwater management agreement. Number three, posting the required financial security for all public improvements as defined in the resolution. Number four, satisfying all applicable township code, sewer authority and water authority requirements. Number five, identifying all stormwater inlets and outfall structures. Number six, obtaining all other applicable permits, having jurisdiction over the project Number seven, paying all applicable project-related costs and fees. <clears throat> Be it further resolved that 19 waivers from the Township Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance are granted. Of these 19 waivers, there were um, a few that dealt with uh, buffer plantings, parking area landscaping, replacement trees, natural resources, open space, and recreational land requirements. Uh, in furtherance of the granting of those waivers, applicant agreed to contribute $2,500 for each unit depicted on the final plan as amended. This contribution will be paid in full at one time at or prior to the recording of the land development documentation and final plan, again, to the satisfaction of uh, the township. And that is the resolution that I'm going to ask the board consider by way of motion. Is there a motion? Yes, I move, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, I would like to now open it up to public comment. Uh, anybody who wishes to uh, comment or have any questions, please approach and uh, say your name and address. So yeah. come on up, sir. Greg I. Denisi, 989 Mueller Road. Um, you said the, uh, that space right behind us is untouched. I just want to be sure that you were going to plant more trees there. He said, "Yes, Greg. We're going to plant more trees. Um, you know, worried about the parking lot. You know, the lights coming in right into our backyard. And, and can I get a copy of that? Do you have a printout of that picture? Yeah, Greg. I could email it to you. That's great. Um, and I could work with you know, the neighbors back there too. Um, right now, we're showing um, about um, nine trees and probably twenty some bushes." I, I can work with you because uh, can, if we can talk later about it, there is some stuff that could probably stay yeah that right behind my house I don't know about Joe but there is some stuff that would block the view for us we are showing our limited disturbance is is, is really only maybe 20 feet past that past that last curve line so it, it, this plan is is very accurate 
as far as this area should not need to be disturbed. Okay. So, so I can, if you want to give me your email address, I can email you the plan and we, we can meet out there, you know, prior to construction. That'd be great. <laughs> yep. I'm happy to do that. And I will say that for county builders, that the projects they've done in Warminster, they've been very proactive with the neighbors and any issues that have come up. I know Kevin Riley's gone out and met with, I know you've gone out and met with neighbors and other projects that you've done in this town. I, that you guys have always gone over and above what's required. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to do that, and, and I am there during construction. So right, when I know you're wrong. <laughs> I don't. I, I take a lot of times I make mistakes, but I do take blame for them. Right. <laughs> I try to make it right. right. I agree with Mr. McKee. You, you have a good relationship with the township. Do a good job. Um, there's definitely a need for the for this type of uh, facility. Uh, my problem is from the very beginning, I have ex explained, was the height of it. I think it's too high to, on York Road, does not fit in with the architecture of, of, of York Road. And uh, that's the, the only, if, if we had three floors, I'd be like, okay with it. But with that extra one, I just think it's over the top. So that, that's the only comment I have about it. Thank you. Is there any other questions or concerns, please, sir? Ed Beck, 985 Muir. I didn't hear you say 55 for the townhouses. When you read that out, I didn't hear you say limit to 55. The age above. restricted? Yeah. Um, that's part of our ordinance that they're oh. operating under. Okay. So it is, it is covered. Um, yeah. and, and it's subsumed to the notion of, of a retirement community, but yeah. we can make that clear with a footnote of okay. some sort. Yeah. One other question. The trees are in behind my house that are falling on my shed. Are you you're going to take them out? The dead ones? I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right. Um, any other uh, common questions from the public? All right. I'm going I just to have one other. I know that people from Caddis or came up from Texas. I want to thank you for bringing bringing all these jobs to Warminster and affordable senior housing. I know we have a lot of senior housing in Warminster, but a lot of it's not so affordable. This is affordable. So I want to, want to thank you for bringing us to Warminster. Right. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board this evening? If not, I'm going to call the vote. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Opposed? <laughs> Nay. <laughs> Thank you. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 3 2. Thank Welcome to Warmer, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Module. Next one up, sorry, got ahead of myself, uh, is the planning module resolution. Do we have that ready to go? Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, the planning module is, uh, is in your packet. It's a standard module uh, for your approval, and I would suggest a motion to uh, approve the uh, 911 York Road planning model resolution 2019-17. Uh, right. So I'll move this, Jim. Is there a second? A second. All right. Uh, second. Any uh, questions or uh, comments from the board on the planning module? Can you just explain to everybody what a planning module is? The sewage planning module. Do you want to take that one, Craig, and get into the details? <clears throat> it, go ahead. It's, well, in fact, I don't review it because you have your own sewer. Yeah. Sorry, but I've done it in the past. I don't need to look at it. Um, it's just, it's a, th through DEP, it's their standard process of what type of project. I'm not even sure what's triggering the planning module in this one. Kevin, do you know? Is there a pump station or? It, it's just because... Um, WMA is under a connection okay. management plan. Uh, so, thanks. That's what I need to know. Um, so, you've been under a connection management plan for a while. So, we haven't seen any larger projects come through, I guess, mm -hmm. since then. So, that's a different scenario. Normally, you would not, you usually don't see these. So, uh, when everything's fine at the, you know, with the conveyance and collection, but there's some issues obviously at the treatment plant. Nothing that they're not aware of, it, but it's called a connection management plan. State approves it, and then any larger projects need to go through. This okay. process. It's simply formality. You defer all reviews. That's why I don't look at it anymore right. to your authority. You have a, okay. a separate authority. So. All right. Any questions or comments from the public on the sewage planning module? I will I'm, make a note that you have, if you approve the project, so just for everybody's aware, if you don't approve this, well. you're, still, you're killing the project. <laughs> so, all right, that's how important it is. <laughs> you have to give people sewer. ideas, Craig. All right. Exactly. Well. They're not leaving until you. So we're going to take a reset. No. Uh, 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 all right. So we uh, there's no comment or questions from the public. Just making sure. Any further questions, comments from the board? 
If not, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 3-2. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. You guys from Texas, the Eagles are going to win the division this year, too, by the way. <laughs> you guys from Texas. <laughs> All right, we are now up to public comment, round number one. This is for township residents, and they have the opportunity at this time to comment on any non-agenda items. Now, it is subject to a five-minute uh, guideline, which I do time on this nifty iPhone. Um, and uh, if there's an agenda item you want to discuss, there is going to be a second round later on. So this is not agenda items. I'm going to take the chairman's prerogative and call on uh, our tax collector, Mrs. Loftus, to address us first. So. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Bobby Loftus, tax collector. First, I would like to thank the residents of Warminster for all their kindness extended to me during my recent illness. Only one person complained that I was unprofessional by taking time off from surgery. Everybody else said fine take your time our $55 check isn't that important so I really thank them for that um, I'm here for a couple reasons tonight number one um, the Pennsylvania property tax and rebate form there's a scam going around for this um, right now it's in Berks County but it can come to Warminster very fast so if you get a phone call from someone saying they're from the property tax and rent rebate and you didn't have enough information on your application, it's a scam. They do not make phone calls. They send letters. They're asking seniors, because anybody who applies for this as a senior, for their social security number or their bank account number. Please do not give it. Hang up on them. It is a scam. Uh, the second thing I wanted to tell you is the um, tour of honor for World War II veterans and Korean, uh, Korean veterans is going to be on October 7th. It is a wonderful, beautiful day for the, um, the veterans. So if anybody's interested, Greg, can I leave one of them here for you? Absolutely. And then they'll be in my office too, and um, they can sign up for it, and it, it is a wonderful, wonderful day. Third thing I wanted to talk about is your tax bills. Um, <clears throat> as of today, I only have 575 people left to pay the township and county tax. Nice. That's out of 10,400. Wow. And we still have next week to pay for it. Um, uh, June 28th is the last day to pay it face. After that, it goes into the 10% penalty. And also remind the people that if their mortgage company pays their taxes and they're a senior citizen and I build them from trash, they can still get their $55 or if they come in to pay their taxes, they can still deduct the $55. A lot of them seem to think that the only time they conduct it is if they pay it in, into um, discount, and that is not true. They can pay it up to December 31st. Um, printed the school bills yesterday. I did 5,000 of them today, and I'll do 5,000 of them next week, and they should be mailed maybe Wednesday. So be on the lookout for your school tax. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Bobby. You, Mrs. Is there anybody else who'd like to participate and come up, please? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just noticed all the water meters being changed in Warminster's in, in your house, correct? Yes, the WMA is undergoing a smart meter replacement. That's that correct. Is correct. Now, I know it's a, a Jersey contractor. I, I understand. I think mm -hmm. I understand why they use the Jersey, con a Jersey contractor. It was explained mm -hmm. to me. There's a lot of man hours out there. There's a lot of meters to change. Are these mm -hmm. guys paying the 1% tax? The warmest are like everybody else does. Well, the one percent tax is based on residency, so I I don't know where they they live. Well, I mean, if you worked in Philly, you pay Philly tax. Uh, Philly, you know, Dan would love to jump in on the Sterling yeah, Act. The Sterling Act. <laughs> Talk about that. I'm just saying, if I worked in Philly, I had to pay yeah, and, four point two percent. I paid it for years. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and when you come out of Philly, it's like getting a raise. Yep. So. And, and you go Phil to Jersey, you pay their tax. Yeah. So. And, and Philly has special legislation that enables that. Uh, we do not. So it's based on where your residence is. And I couldn't tell you where. So the people. answer is no. They're not paying. If they live in Warminster. And they're receiving wages in, you know, from a warm. You know, if they live in Warminster, yes, they are paying it. I don't know where they live. Right. Well, they're they're all out of Jersey. I mean, the, right. com the company. Then, then they're then they're not paying it. Is there is there a way to get that then? No. 
because, for example, I work in well, they, Plymouth they meetings, stairs, right? So when I what? I pay my one percent, it's coming back to Warminster. Well, Plymouth like meetings not getting my one percent. Hmm. So it's a reciprocal agreement. Is that correct? Am I going it should, off? It, uh, it should be. That's the way it always certain. was for me when I worked. Like if I worked in a city, right? The city does. The does. City takes all our money and doesn't give any back. I agree with you 100. percent Well, they would take yeah. the one. They would take the one percent and give it to you from their fortune. No, they would not. No, no. That's the way it used to be. We have 1,700 residents who live in Warminster and work in Philadelphia. The residents who work in Philadelphia, that 1% never comes back to Warminster. And that comes out to $500,000 a year. So that's a lot of money we're losing. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. we agree with you. We yeah. want to capture as much revenue and much income that happens here as possible. But right now, the way that the, the city wage law is set up is we never get our 1% back. It we couldn't have like the Warminster Township water guys go out there and change that meters. It's only like two bolts. It takes like 15 minutes. Right. I, well, that's something you'd have to bring up with the municipal authority. That's right. not on. I mean, it's too late now. I mean, it, right. three yeah. quarters of them are done now, right? right? It, it was. They're a separate governed entity from the township. We don't. Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, low. I mean, I understand what you're saying 100. percent I mean, it's, I, whenever possible, you know, I prefer that we stay local. Whenever possible. Sometimes the sometimes the the gears of government don't always let us do that. So, but uh, when you know, like for example, whenever I go out to eat, I try to stay in Warminster. You know, it's 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 that simple. But with with something like the WMA, I can't talk intelligently about it because I don't know what their discussions were. So I don't want to sit here and guess. But I I, I understand where you're so going. So are we going to look into that five hundred thousand that we're losing a year? I am currently. Yes, okay. I am okay. for years. Okay. About three years now. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. All right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Just just to touch on that with respect to the the meter replacement. Mm -hmm. um, so. I, uh, while I wasn't home, my wife was home. Um, somebody knocked on our door saying, hey, you know what, we're out in the area, you know, we're replacing these. Admittedly, I did not schedule that yet, um, but they actually came knocking to our, at our door. And, you know, the first thing I told my wife when she called me about it, I said, no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll do that through a more, uh, it, I'll call them, yeah, more formal setting, thank you. Um, and one of the first things I did was I, I, I'm like, what was the name of the company that they, contracted out and I went to the Warminster uh, the municipal authorities website and there was nothing listed at least nothing that I could find so I did speak to Lakewood or something. yeah I, I spoke to a couple of their people about it I don't know if they're changing that with respect to their website um, but uh, you know I, I, I so in case that's out there I mean I still would recommend you just call uh, the WMA and, and do it that route right. so. is there Kenny, I just have to hold you for one moment because LM had her hand up before you. LM, would you please? I'll have a seat, Ken. Mr. Hayes, I promise you're <laughs> next. Have a seat, Ken. Hi, <laughs> LM. Hi. I'm here for my monthly update on Wawa. They have a hoagie for sale this month. It's really good. Good. You know, I don't Maybe eat Wawa. Like I don't eat Wawa. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ianozzi to give you the update. So. Well, Thank you, Mr. I just, Chairman. I try, got to try to make you smile a little bit. That's all. That's okay. All right. We'll try. Go ahead, sir. And good evening. Um, you'll recall a few months ago the board committed to uh, actively looking at this hype bar issue and coming up with a resolution. I'm happy to report that I believe that we have uh, gotten to that point or we're on our way. Um, we have uh, heard the complaints, we've analyzed uh, internally uh, the options, we've spoken to Wawa, and thus far it's been determined that the height bars in their, current uh, in their current configuration represent a significant safety issue, um, as well as a uh, significant liability issue, and that the, the safety threats are rather imminent meaning that at any given time, depending on the vehicle that's traversing or attempting to traverse under those, those height bars could be dislodged and create a significant issue uh, and significant injury. So toward that end, the board recognizing the emergent circumstance, the emergency nature of this is directed, Wawa, to remove all height bars as soon as practicable. And Wawa has committed to working with the township in identifying a more efficient, effective means of controlling access on that roadway, including but not limited to signage prepared and installed to the satisfaction of the township, um, speed tables, as well as uh, appropriate striping 
They've also committed to identifying and making it widely known a complaint phone number and email so individuals that uh, see issues happening both into access or anything else relative to Wawa can contact Wawa in an expedited fashion and get a response in an expedited fashion. And Wawa has also uh, indicated that they would be um, pulling the dead plant material on the adjoining um, buffer and installing new plant material uh, to fill in the holes to the satisfaction of the township. Okay. So that's where we are. Okay. Now, they've done signage before. Nobody listens. Trucks are going down there now. So what are you going to do about it now? I, I just indicated what we're going to do. We're going to remove the okay, height bars because they're emergency. What, what's the emer what is the um, Because of, of, of the emergent circumstance. Because half of them are, are, and I thought this was your complaint a month ago, wherein you <laughs> acknowledged that one of them was, was hanging, uh, you know, I think your words were, uh, you know, from a thread. So, no, that's not my complaint. It's the illegal one that they put up without having any approval, without having a permit, and without having it inspected. No, they didn't put up. No, wait a minute. Me. Let me speak. You asked me a question. Me, Can I answer yeah, it? Yeah, but let me speak first. Okay, go ahead. They didn't put in the proper chains. The chains links come open. They didn't put in any good material. Well, I got, so of course I got they good got news good for material. you. I got good news for you. They're coming down, so we don't have to worry about the chains. Well, okay. They're what coming do down due to the emergent circumstance. And to answer your question relative to the sign, it's what we're doing this time that we hadn't done before is, and again, this is going to be done to the township satisfaction, their consultants, my satisfaction, the board's satisfaction. These signs are going to properly demarcate what trucks can traverse and what can't by identifying a height, weight, and axle limit. Now, is this an ideal situation? Absolutely not. Is this a situation wherein you'll never have a violator? Absolutely not. But it, it is a more effective means, a safer means, and we're going to have Wawa receive these complaints and in a year's time we're going to revisit to see how effective this speed table was how effective this sign was and how, how effective the striping was and and we will review that okay what but at are this juncture that is the proposal on the table and that is uh where we stand and where are they going to do this now uh the letter will go out tomorrow it is my uh strong recommendation that wawa be instructed to remove the hype bars oh, post haste broke oh uh, that's you can borrow <laughs> Thank you. Okay, but now, my point to you, I had to start with tonight, is that everybody here has been telling us in Warmester that Warmester broke. And on your agenda tonight, you're gonna to talk about what the value of the, some of the, determine the value of some of the assets and possible tax and kites, which we've already heard mm -hmm. to mention. Now, you, mm -hmm. your job is to be good stewards to the taxpayer's money and we need to be frugal. That is why we don't understand why we've had, they've had three to four plus more months of our township lawyer and township representatives talking with Wawa lawyers and representatives that they, Wawa, are now even asking for a traffic ed engineer to come in and then get a report and tell the township what they want to do, which costs the township money. Why? Why do we, doesn't a court in agreement mean anything? Obviously, I guess not. Because how can you, the township and Wawa, agree to a court thing and then just turn around and do what they want to do? Is that how it works with Wawa? It sounds like it though. And there's an agreement here signed with Warmester Township and Wawa signed by Judge James McMaster on March the 2nd, 2017. And are you just gonna tear this agreement up and let Wawa go and do as they please? Are there more important things than, than working with your neighborhood people in the township? I think basically you're afraid of Wawa because you've never find them. They've been going since November in violation of this court order and none of you do anything. Now, we, all we want is our height bars back, properly installed as agreed from the time before they even put a shovel in the ground. Okay, Wawa agreed to this. They weren't unsafe in the beginning. Just all of a sudden they became unsafe because they take it down and what they can do now is have their trucks go down. It's fine. They also have deliveries. The last three nights they've had delivered, not like three nights in the last two weeks. Three times we've seen their truck there after 10 o'clock. 
and, and they had a gas delivery too the other night, but the hum of the refrigeration unit is what we hear. So we know they're there and I went over and took a picture of it. But are any of you caring to preserve the quality of life for our neighborhood? Or is Wawa more important to you? Are you gonna stop spending the taxpayer's money? Because the court order should be enough. We shouldn't have had to have pay for our lawyer to discuss all this stuff with them. This is a waste of township money. And you said also you wanted to use the four corners of this paper. There is nothing in this paper about traffic things, nothing about anything that you're talking about. The height bar is one of the things. But if you read it, you will see they have the planning, they have uh, snow removal, the fence, and the height bar. But there's nothing about traffic patterns, nothing about speed bumps, nothing at all. That is not acceptable. They did try this before. It didn't work. So why are we going backwards? That, that's what the board has directed us to do. Now, let me just, just correct board? a few things. This board here. Okay, why let, are you guys going backwards Let me then? just answer a few questions. You've, you, you've raised a couple of issues. Uh, you can, by way of right to know, quantify how much the, the township has spent, including my time on this issue, and I respectfully suggest it is insignificant. Number two, the, the cost of the plans and the preparation of the signage and, and the designs are all at Wawa's expense. Number three, for the sake of brevity this evening, I, I didn't give you the behind the scenes. That Yes, you're absolutely right. That order ultimately will need to be amended to reflect the, 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 the taking out of the height bar requirement and the installation of these new more effective uh, access uh, curbing uh, type measures. What curbing? Also, the four corners we have stayed consistent. The snow removal piece has not been changed and the obligation to continue to plant and to replace and to do that on an annual basis remains. So that order, the only thing that's changed in that order is we're taking out the height bar, which has proven to be ineffective and dangerous and a significant liability. And we're putting in a more effective, cost effective and safer means to control access. Okay, then are we now then because of this, I guess all you have to remove all the height bars in our township because then they are the same thing. Ineffective, they're dangerous. Start with Chick-fil-A, the gas stations, Dunkin' Donuts, they all have them and no, there's not a problem with any of them. So how come if Wawa all of a sudden has a problem, because they didn't want them anyway, they didn't like the idea. And as they said, they never put a height bar up in any of their places. So this is why they didn't like it. Then everyone in the township has to be removed. Start with Starbucks, the banks, they all have restrictions. So if they're unsafe, they're all unsafe. Well, I can only speak to what we analyzed here. And well, no, you have to take be, the whole thing into effect because you're only It would, it would be my strong Wawa. recommendation to solve this issue, and then and then we'll we'll take them on a case by case basis based no, upon no. the complaints. No, no. If one is bad, preserved. if one is bad, they all are bad. I'm sorry, but if a height bar is dangerous in one place, it's dangerous in every place. So the car wash has even a seven foot, much lower. So I guess they have to be removed too. Now. I, I know, any of you have an explanation of what happened to the bank, the one at the bank that was bent so badly? Did any of you look into the police report to see why or anything? Has there been anything written up about it? I believe that one's coming down too. It's already down. Now you believe it. You were told last month it was down. So why don't you remember that? Because I'm sorry. there are bigger things in this township than just the height bars well, and then, the laws. Then Will you have your opinion? No, if he's negotiating the height please. bars, he should know what's going No, ma'am, he's he a lawyer. Last month. He's a lawyer. He has many things on his plate. He does not have the time to go out and look at every height bar. We well, have he people should know who Wawa do that. Then, if he's and everybody, and, uh, I, that is your opinion, and I respect your opinion. At the same time, not everybody shares every opinion that you have. And it's not meant to disrespect you. It's not meant to disrespect your position. It's just not shared by everyone on the board. Well, you and, know what? None of you board members live there. Maybe you should. Maybe you should see the trucks and live it from your home and then see how you like it. Okay? Mm -hmm. None of you, you got this. This was how they got the buffer zone. They took the area of the buffer zone mm -hmm. from the neighbors. They were given five feet for green area. The five feet was mm -hmm. the road. First of all, they lied right there. Mm -hmm. Then make them move the road back five feet and give it green grass there. Give the five feet the green like they told the zoning board they were going to do. Then with the zoning board, with the five foot, they put the fence, moved the fence three feet more. That to me is five and three is eight feet then they took instead of five. Then they turn around and they to were told that nothing over eight feet could go down that road. And they agreed upon that before. 
Now, after they got it, all of a sudden, everything is so bad and so dangerous. It's not dangerous. It's only dangerous for people that don't respect the law. It's only dangerous for people who want to drive their truck down. If you see a thing that says 8 foot or 10 foot clearance, and you have a 12 foot truck, it's okay, just run it in. It's dangerous. Everything has to be removed. That's what your theory is. It's wrong. Well, now the good thing is when you when you witness something like that, you're going to have a contact. You can call Wawa. You oh, can that's a Wawa. bunch of bull. Well, that's that, that's what excuse you can do. me. We've done that before. We have pictures. You haven't even did you see all the pictures of the trucks before? I didn't care to look at that. I, I was here to solve the problem, not look at the. Pants. Well, you're here to solve the problem, but that's the cre you're creating the next problem. We don't have to go report anything because they're gone by time. I just had a white box truck go down the other day, and I went over to take it quickly when I was out picture and it's down turning left on the street road I'm sorry that's a cop-out a cop-out from every one of you none of you have the backbone to stand up and keep an ordinance that has been issued by a judge and you're just letting Wawa tell you what is it that Wawa, Wawa has nothing on us I don't even like Wawa I grew up with sheets so it's not about <laughs> Wawa it's not about Wawa it's about there's there are so many things that go into this I don't wish to debate this in public and, and say anything that might be disrespectful to you. I, I respect you. I, nobody has been more passionate about an issue in my six years on this board than you have been about this Wawa thing. And I and we have really tried to do everything we can. Well, but at was. the same time, for example, the 14 foot height bar you, that you that you it's probably, 16 feet. 16 right feet. Right. I'm sorry, 16 feet. That needs to come down. That's coming down on this. But why was it even allowed to go up and stay up for months? Why was it allowed? Because if I put in a, to build. A, a deck on my house right. and you give me a permit and then I build a two-car garage mm -hmm. and a three-story addition to the house you'll let me do that and never say a word to me well no. until somebody reports it we wouldn't know because oh, well, we're we, not driving around well, looking no, at every structure but we reported this before so therefore it's been reported so that takes care of that but in other words and anybody I'll, I'll can do what they want right. no, because, they cannot. okay how now tell me if it didn't work before how do you propose it's going to work now it's not working now, so how is staying with the, the status quo working? Work. It was there for over a year and a half, and no problems whatsoever until Wawa decided that it was a problem. But there was nothing wrong with the height bars that were in there before. They worked fine, and you didn't see us for that time either. Mm -hmm. And now that they took it down and didn't repair it, and you permitted them not to repair it, which is against this court order, which obviously court orders don't mean anything to any of you, then. How come? I, I just have to say, it's you have to understand that I, I, I have a different opinion. I'm not I'm Maybe not sitting up here I'm not sitting up here and and saying you're wrong and you're an a hole because you don't agree with me. You're impugning every one of these people and they're not trying to hurt you. They're right. not trying to make it worse for you and the residents of Orchard Lane. First they're all, trying their level of best. You just said for your line the a hole. Well, Did I, I apologize for that. You you have you have you have called us spineless. You have impugned our integrity. You say, said we were fine. Wawa. I, I, you don't have right. a backbone to stand up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, we've definitely exceeded the five minute time frame at this point. You know um, what? I think, this has, been, I think this has been wrapped frame. up by the solicitor and explained. Right. Um, so you know, Greg, I think it's time to, to move Greg, on. Greg, you sat there and didn't even want to go over anything. You just wanted everything done. Just, now you're changing everything back. Everybody. And not yeah, no telling us Again. one thing about it, and I think this is wrong. You should have you said that they should notify us. Something. They're, they're notifying. This just happened. Oh. This just happened today, did it not? Correct. In executive session. Well, then tell me what kind of signage are they going to put up that trucks are not going well, to go. It'll be worked out. Thank you for your comment. Again, the five-minute period okay. is up. Well, Craig, I'll be back up for five minutes more because well. you don't stand up and talk either. You you didn't, when we had a meeting. You said you take this or you leave it. It's a bullying effect to us. That's how you treated the neighbors when we came out. And you're the one cutting. And I think when it's got an issue that's important, yeah, you, you should be able to have some time to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Monroe just needs his pen yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. But I think, it's, I think it's a wimpy way out for all of you if you can't stand up. Now, you're going to guarantee us that what are you going to do about the trucks? We call you and tell us the trucks? Wawa's not going to do anything about the thank, thank you for your comment. The five-minute period is over. Greg, I want an answer from you then. Thank you for your comment. Greg, that's rude. You are rude. We pay our tax money to pay your salary. And if we want to talk about a thing, you talk to other people longer because we've got that on tape to see. The chicken people were way longer than five minutes. 
and you let them go, and you didn't, weren't rude to them, and don't you be rude to me again. You owe me an apology for your rudeness. Because that's what I, if you're a township manager, you should be mannerly. But you don't have that, and you don't have the guts to say. And you didn't have anybody call us and tell us either, except when the meeting telling us to take it or leave it. That's not the way you should have treated the neighbors when we talk to you. But are any of you going to do anything? You're just going to let them just have their way. Again, the five minute period has expired. Okay, well, I'm going to take my second five minute for my split personality then. Now that's a good okay, split the, personality. The, there, there, there is public comment at the end of the meeting, which you can have another five minutes there. Okay, but I. You can laugh. It's all okay. But I think, Greg, you're just rude. You didn't have the guts to call us, you didn't have the guts to tell us either. Thank you, Ellen. Is there any other public comment? It's been 10 years, yes, and none of you can speak. Yes. Mr. Hayes. Good evening, everyone. Ken Hayes, 850 Lingo Drive. Sorry, I forgot uh, it was summer casual. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, just to clarify, um, I've had some questions about the uh, water meters and the, and the labor that's provided. And um, <clears throat> the story I was told, just for people watching, that, um, that that contract went out through, I guess, PennBid, it was a state contract. And when it was awarded the company that won it, they source their labor from that company in New Jersey. So it was part of the contract. That was the ex explanation I had. <clears throat> okay, anyway, um, as far as the EAC goes, we are having a meeting this Monday, 7 o'clock. There will be a presentation uh, on renewable energy. Um, a group's coming in, and they're trying to um, convince PICO to um, source more renewable energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next thing I'd like to open up for discussion, um, I understand we're, we're losing a significant amount of police officers. And um, I think the training, um, what the cost to train an officer was probably, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to guess and say $100,000, 90 to 100000 to train officers, more or less. Regardless, I don't know that number, but I know it's significant. And to, for the township to um, spend those resources and then lose these officers, um, I think we need to um, come up with something to... Uh, to add police to the police force and, you know, and, and re retain officers. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Is there any other uh, public comment? Yes, ma'am. Darlene Baker, 1537 Mulberry Circle. Okay. Um, so I wanted to thank all our sponsors, our volunteers, and particularly Karen and Kathy at the Parks and Rec Department for making Warminster Day a huge success this year. They left already, but I had a dar <laughs> star for them that says you make a difference because I give out gold stars to people who do really good things. Um, but on the other side of things, I just want to point out that I'm not sure that they got all the commitment of Warminster with all the resources to help with Warminster Day. Those, those two people work so hard and they are very committed and they're going to make anything they do a success and but they have a lot of uh, blood sweat and tears in everything they do and they work really long hours so you know if we want to have successful Warminster days again I think we have to put all the commitment of all the resources in Warminster um, against that I know I know the Public Works Department they're really busy paving the roads and they're doing a phenomenal job but if we want to have Warminster days to help with like the day that prep time, I think we need to um, make sure that we're gonna, if we wanna have more Warminster days, we have the commitment of those, all the Warminster resources for, to make that day successful and not just put it on two people to um, get all the volunteers and um, everything that they do. So um, just my opinion, but I think it's something that you guys have to take very seriously going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Thank Thank yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Bob Wells, Hollowell Avenue, Warmerster, PA. Uh, just asking, has the water been turned on over Shenandoah Woods for fire protection? 
And if not, has anybody reached out to the Navy? Uh, this, to me, is a concern, a safety concern for the township, especially with our hot, dry summer that we're going to have, maybe. So the water has not been turned on. Um, if you recall from my last meeting, I reported that the Navy has refused to do that. They have not changed their position. Uh, we have been in contact with our federal officials. Those offices were very concerned with the situation and are trying to work with the Navy right now. But as of right now, uh, the Navy is not turning that water on. So I understand the way to fight that fire is to use tankers. Is there available tankers immediately in the area to help us if we get a fire in there? So there are tanker task force that can be brought in uh, from multiple areas. Uh, for areas uh, such as Warminster that are nearly 100% uh, on city water, uh, it's typical they don't have tankers because there's really not a need for it. There's hydrants everywhere. So some of the communities that are uh, maybe a little bit to the north that don't have the uh, extended water system that uh, some of the uh, our neighbors have do have those tankers. So yeah, they'd be coming from some distance uh, to, to respond to the fire. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment for this round? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. And uh, for that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight's consent agenda is as follows. Item A is approval of your minutes from your meeting of May 16, 2019. Item B is authorization to execute a police employee separation agreement. Item C is 1270 Mearns Road, release number two from escrow in the amount of $148,037.40 as recommended by the engineer. Item D is the Fuge, release number one from the escrow in the amount of $34,128.90 as recommended by the engineer. Item E is the stations at Bucks County East escrow closeout in the amount of $9,026.14 from legal and engineering escrow. Uh, item F is payment, the, fir the first and final payment uh, for the 2019 curb ramp installation contract to Albert Cipollini Jr. and Sons in the amount of $66,859.90. You'll note in the agenda, it does says contingent upon receipt of the revised maintenance bond uh, and original copies. We've received word from the engineer that that, has con that contingency has been satisfied. Uh, item G, uh, consider application for payment one uh, for Warren Mr. Township 2019 roadway milling contract to Rota Mill Inc. in the amount of $57,153.73 as recommended by the engineer. All right. Can I have a uh, motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions or concerns before? All right. Seeing none. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. <sighs> Consent agenda carries 5 0. Uh, finance report. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve the May transfers. The supplemental bill list dated May 31st, 2019, in the amount of $578,756.76. And the bill list dated June 20th, 2019, in the amount of $1,235,000. $235,021.94. Okay. Uh, is there a second? A second. Any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Carries 5 0. Okay. Mr. Schuster, the May financial statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I report every month, we are still tracking generally to budget uh, for all funds. Um, the uh, tax revenue, as anticipated, has been coming in. Um, so nothing new to report, of course, as I remind you every single month, tracking to budget still means a very sizable deficit uh, in the general fund. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Mr. Uh, Schuster? Yeah, question. With the CADIS approval this evening, that, that, will that impact our deficit? Uh, it depends. So first of all, the, the monies that were taken fee in lieu of, there are restrictions on that based on the resolution. So that would not be for general use most likely. Um, however, based on the timing of the project, it could defray some of that deficit the uh, through the building and permits and everything. Right. It's certainly not going to solve the overall problem, right. Right. Um, but it, it, it would certainly help a, a, a little. Right. I, I definitely would not overestimate or count on that revenue as, right. as changing anything uh, significantly with our overall financial picture. 
Okay. So let's let's review one more time. We projected it. Two point. So the, so the approved budget had approximately $2.3 million deficit uh, in the general fund. Uh, we do know that by uh, foregoing uh, the, uh, the, the payment, uh, the appropriate payment, going back to the, uh, the, the uh, smoothing method for the police uh, pension, we can save approximately half a million dollars. We also have approximately half a million dollars in the operating reserve account uh, that we can use. So between those two. We'll need to use that? Will we need to move that over at some point? It's hard to say right now, but I would say uh, it's a strong possibility. Well, so we're, we're basically going to be zeroed out on fund balance by year's end. Pretty close to it. it. There's a lot of balls in the air, but if we keep going at the level of spending that we have right now, and we still have the level of revenue that we have right now, um, I anticipate running out of money uh, sometime in the, you know, it could be late this year, it, I'm sorry, not this year, it could be early next year, mid next year. It depends on a whole variety of factors. This is going to be an incredibly difficult budget for you to construct for 2020. I don't, I don't know how you begin to construct it knowing that you're going to run out of money. There's a lot of things that are going to go into that process, yes. Hmm. Right. We have a lot of decisions to make and soon. Any other questions or comments? All right, we're going to move on then. Uh, there is no unfinished business this evening. Uh, we are now up to new business. First up is to consider approval of PFM agreements, Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are two agreements for you to consider this evening with PFM. Uh, the first agreement is for them to do an analysis of our financial needs and do some financial modeling. Uh, as you know, as we enter these uh, discussions about how to solve our financial problems, uh, we need to know exactly how much money we need, uh, whether that be in a lump sum or whether that be in a continuing payment. Uh, the uh, hole that we're in right now with our pension fund is based on an 8% assumed rate of return. Uh, we need to know what the modeling shows if we were to put in a more appropriate rate of return in there. We also need to model out what the OPEB costs are going to be if we're going to fully fund that growing liability. So in order to do that, uh, we need PFM to come in and do that analysis for us. It's the critical piece that tells us what what amount of money and what form would solve our issues. So that agreement um, is an uh, hourly basis not to exceed uh, $10,000. The second agreement uh, is for analysis of options. Um, as Mr. Crowley indicated earlier, there's a number of options uh, on the table uh, that could be discussed, uh, such as taxes, uh, such as um, uh, leasebacks, such as sale of assets. Uh, the second agreement would allow them to go ahead, analyze all those particular options, and provide feedback to the board uh, as you have those uh, deliberations. Uh, that uh, contract also would be on an hourly basis, not to exceed $25,000. However, it's also on contingency. Uh, it would not, uh, we would not owe anything uh, unless uh, some deal is actually uh, done. Mm -hmm. So to be clear, none of these uh, agreements lock us into any action beyond uh, just receiving their analysis? That is correct. Okay. Is there any questions for Mr. Schuster before I take a motion? Can I do How you? long is this going to take? We're projecting Very quickly. Uh, mid to end July. Good. Can I make a motion to accept both, or do we have to do two separate agreements? You can do both at the same time. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, approve both PFM agreements that are currently on the table? So moved. Is there a second? No second. Okay. Is there any further comment or questions from the board? Any comment or questions from the public? So we'll have all the information we need to make informed decision, you're saying, in July, correct? Uh, that is correct. By the end of July, I expect to have all the information we need. It's just a matter of scheduling everyone to get them together and, and okay. presenting that. Yes. I'm glad we're moving in the right direction. And, and to be clear so that everybody knows, because I know there's often questions about it, once this data is collected and these options formed, they are going to be presented at a public meeting. That, that's correct. Yeah. So. 
there, the first step would be an executive session because right. this is covered uh, under uh, under the executive session laws. Uh, at that point, uh, you're going to have to the board is going to have to make some decisions, mm -hmm. and that would be done in a public forum. Right. Um, any decision, any of the larger decisions, um, would probably require multiple meetings and, and multiple votes to go ahead and, and go through. Uh, so this is not something that's going to occur overnight, nor is it something that's just going to appear magically one day uh, that no one knew about. It'll take uh, some time to work through that process. Thank you, sir. And all that information will be on our website, so if any folks are interested, they can come to the meetings and, and listen to the options and, and have the transparency that we want them to have. Well, that, that really is dependent upon what the board wants to do. You have the right, um, because we're dealing with real estate matters, of conducting a lot of this in executive session. So what you choose to disclose um, is really up to you. If the board wants to do the you know, the full transparency and get everything out there, uh, that's perfectly fine with me. But I just want to let you that is your choice. Well, I was talking about the, the general oh. supervisors meeting where folks can come and speak their opinions. In terms of the process, absolutely. Right. Yes. That, yes. That's, what, that's what I was referring to. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. I imagine that, that we've been pretty wide open about this. And right. We, you know. I can't imagine us changing the Just folks to know, you know the path. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, you see this going on in Warrington right now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of going in a different direction. They sort of gotten uh, unsolicited bids right. that came in, and so uh, it's similar to what we're doing, but not the same. So I just I've been watching it and hoping that to learn from what they're doing and mm -hmm. hopefully do it better. Um, just want to make sure. Any comments, questions from the public? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. The motion carries 5-0. We now move on to the next item, which is consider approval of the LED project contract. Mr. Schuster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a contract to utilize a PICO vendor named SmartWatt uh, to change out the lights in the administration and police building. Uh, it's lights and fixtures. Uh, this is slightly under uh, $10,000. Uh, we do estimate that the payback period um, uh, for the savings that we will receive would be about 12 months. So this is pretty quick payback period in the energy savings that we'll receive. All right. Um, can I get a motion to approve the LED project contract? Motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Any questions, concerns? No. Any questions or concerns from the public on this item? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion carries. 5-0. Third item under new business is authorized advertisement for golf course irrigation bid. CN 2019-06, Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know we talked about this at a previous meeting, gave a presentation on this. Um, we're nearing the point where the, uh, the specs are pretty much ready to go out for bid. Uh, we're asking for permission to advertise at this, uh, at this time. Um, we are still waiting to get final uh, language and feedback from our insurance carrier, so we'd ask that you approve it, contingent upon getting that feedback and, and uh, review by the solicitor. A um, couple things to note. Uh, number one, this would fall under the responsible contract ordinance. Uh, there is some concern that we, we don't know if uh, there are actually vendors out there that would um, uh, meet the criteria in the responsible contract ordinance. But nevertheless, we're going to put it out to bid and, and see what happens. If there's an issue, we'd have to have further discussion uh, on that. Uh, second thing to remember uh, is that we will need to put some financing in place uh, to handle this. This project is estimated to be over a million dollars, um, and for cash flow purposes, we would want to finance it. However, it's also important to recognize that this is all self-contained within the golf fund. This doesn't impact taxes, doesn't impact the general fund, uh, but this, uh, this would all be uh, in the golf fund. All right. And Spirit Golf has been patiently waiting in case you have any questions uh, for them on the actual project itself. I, I have a couple. We'll bring them on up. Take action first, or do you want to? Let's, let's get the questions out of the way. They're here. Sure. And, and we have Paul McMahon with us from uh, Hydro Design, who uh, has been working uh, with the township, uh, with Amanda, and, and our solicitor to, uh, to just go through the bid process. So, Paul, why don't you come up to just to uh, assure them there might be some technical questions. My, my question was what timeline when were you when were you when, once it goes out for bid when do you think the project would get underway how long will it take how would it impact the golf course operation 
It's not going to make your game better if that's no, what you're No, I know. I've, I've, I've given up on that. <laughs> you'll, you'll get some free relief. I always do well when I'm by myself at 6 in the morning. I'm like, nobody's here to see this. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a brief, and then Paul can uh, certainly uh, jump in. Um, but if, uh, if we move forward uh, with approval uh, today, and then obviously uh, waiting on the insurance, if that goes quickly in the next couple of days, I guess, hopefully, um, we can have documents ready you know, ready to go and, and uh, start advertising next week. Right. Um, I think the process is 30 days we got to go, right? 30 days for, uh, for advertising. There, uh, there is a process to advertise now. There actually is an additional step because the responsible contract ordinance, you're going to have to uh, go through a two-step process right. where it would come before you and you're going to uh, vote to have a notice of intent to award the bid, give mm -hmm. people an opportunity to file any objections or concerns, and then a meeting following that would be the actual award of the bid. That's right. following the, the responsible contract. Yeah, Correct. and then when we change that, we front-loaded it. So. Yeah. Right, and, and the objective would be to, to accomplish uh, uh, the bid award by... Um, uh, so that we can be start the project in the fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, project would go through the fall into the winter, and I think we had a March, March fifteenth to April fifteenth. We we got a little leeway there as far as uh, completion date. Great, excellent. Well, I, I haven't seen you at the podium in a while. I wanted to tell you that um, I was at an outing for the chamber a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You guys, did a terrific job. The clubhouse uh, looks great. No, yeah. It's never looked better. Yeah, it, it looks really, great in there. So. No, I think I commented on social media the other the other night that. Did it for a municipal golf course. This is truly the, the right way to run a municipal golf course. Yeah, thanks thank to you. you guys. It's yeah, it's been fun really, and really uh, well. it's been well received. So it's yeah. been great. So thank yeah, you. So nice, nice work, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Getting all good comments. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. That's good yeah, stuff. It's really being run well. Staff does a great job. Yeah. Any other questions? No. All right. Let's. Uh, can I have a motion? Sure. So move. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any uh, questions or comments from the public? All right, seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're now moving to professionals' reports. First up is the Township Manager's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have my written report in case you have any questions. Just two, thing to mention, two things to mention. Uh, Warminster Day, I think, was a fantastic success. Thanks to everyone that came out, all the staff that helped out, Public Works, Park and Rec, uh, police, fire, you know, everyone that was really responsible uh, for making And, of course, all our volunteers. We had tremendous vendors there. Uh, thanks again to uh, the Cowie family and ShopRite for, for all their support. Uh, it just really was a, a phenomenal event. So I want to thank everyone uh, that came out and... Uh, and supported that. And the other thing I'd like to mention, uh, which I'm sure will be uh, completely ignored, is that we're aware the 4th of July is coming up. Um, everyone is under the assumption that since Pennsylvania did change the fireworks law, uh, that fireworks are completely legal. That is not true. Um, you have a number of things which would interfere with people shooting off fireworks. Probably the largest one is that fireworks are not allowed to be used within 150 feet of a structure. You're also not allowed to use it on public property. So those two things alone make, uh, make it very difficult to find a location in Warminster uh, to shoot off fireworks. Um, there's also a noise ordinance in play. I'm, I'm not uh, naive enough to, know, to think that uh, we won't have issues on the 4th of July. I would just say that please be responsible, please respect your neighbors, uh, and as always, just be smart about it. And that's my report. Thank you. Any questions for the no. No, for the manager? All right. Thank you, sir. Moving on, our solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we prepared our report on June 14th. I commend your attention to, thank you, County View Properties LP. That is the uh, 2,600 uh, square foot Wendy's. I'm proud to report that we got the uh, their land development documentation. We prepared that. Uh, we passed that off. They signed it, and I think it's en route to being recording ultimately. Uh, so we're moving some paper. We're moving some dirt, and that's uh, all good things. All right. Any questions for our solicitor? Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. And now our engineer's report. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll cross off the Wendy's project update, uh, but I have a better one. The Rosemore Donuts... What? No, no. See, I can see you there, buddy. Oh, the Rosemore Donuts <laughs> plans have been uh, delivered to the township, and Amanda dropped them, or actually, I delivered them to the office this week. Uh, we will uh, 
be reviewing those. They Wait, Amanda, you kept that one under wraps. Yes. <laughs> Steve Harris brought the check last week. So we've been minorly celebrating. The Planning Commission did get to find out because yeah, it came that cool. same day. But yes, we've been doing a little. Aaron and I have been prepping everything behind the scenes to get them ready to go. They're funding the rescrow. They're ready they to move funded forward. Funded it, paid off yep. the paid outstanding everything. balance. Paid off the lien. Sent us everything that Aaron and I have requested from them. I think we have one agreement to update with them on the financials um, and then just finish the ARCA plans. And then they need to do all their building permits finally correctly now, we'll I still think there. they have issue they're gonna have some issues with PennDOT which I think they never really addressed so we may get to the finish line pretty quickly but and I'll well know. they do have a PennDOT permit that's what yeah I yeah. thought they did have is that, a, yeah. Is that yeah so yeah. they actually got we it's do issued? we have it okay. it's issued well, it, issue, it got right? issued in the d PennDOT permit was issued in what 2016 yeah that's what I thought I thought it was older than they have to go back no that, so. yeah no they got it okay. in 2016 so we might move along pretty quick with that oh, they got and the they received their extension as well all right. So uh, on page one, where you see you see no recent action from our office, you can now cross that off. All right. <laughs> uh, the only other update I have is uh, Lidl uh, grocery store. Uh, those revised plans, and they are revised plans. It's actually not even revised; they're a new set of plans. Uh, they've uh, modified their proposal application uh, from the last time you've seen them. So it's basically a new set of plans. Uh, they it's been reviewed and they are scheduled for the July 23rd Planning Commission okay. if they receive uh, approval there they'll move on to your August meeting so Lidl is back and you should see them in right. August um, by the way I um, I, I stumbled ab across a, a news article this was a few weeks back that was specifically about Lidl and uh, and I saw it. Yeah, yeah, you put it up on yeah, Reddit? yeah. Uh, yeah, I threw it up on uh, Facebook. And it basically, this, so what they've done here in Warminster isn't just in Warminster. They've been doing this with this their entire, you know, North yeah. uh, American plan with shrinking and adding to the site. So, so yeah, I was very I was very intrigued by that. Now it won't be just that store. There's 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 other things going on on that project. So it'll be expanded. Uh, there'll be some new issues, but. I anticipate you'll see them in August. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I thought, I thought Rosemore Donuts would get moving before Weiss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what it looks like. All right. Um, all right. So now we are up to the Township Manager's announcement of upcoming agenda items. Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is no meeting on July 4th. Uh, the next meeting is uh, July 18th. Uh, at that meeting, uh, I do expect the auditors to be here. Originally, we were going to have them this evening, uh, but there was a slight delay with the audit, and we want to give you time to read it ahead of time. Uh, so they will be here at the, uh, the July meeting. They'll also be awarding a fuel bid, and a budget amendment uh, will also be on the agenda. But right now, it's relatively light. That's, that's what we have. I don't anticipate uh, any land use on the agenda at that, right. that evening. Thank you. Any questions regarding the upcoming agenda? Thank you. All right. All right, ding, ding, ding. Second round of public comment. Uh, LM, can I let Kenny go first and then we'll go right to you, if that's okay? Thank you. Mr. Hayes. Thank you very much. I'll be brief. Okay. Um, and I forgot to thank uh, Burpee for donating baskets full of seeds for the Warminster Day. It was very generous of them. And um, also the VFW, uh, when I was there at the uh, Memorial Day Parade, I talked to them. My father's uh, bronze plaque for his service in World War II was stolen mm -hmm. and, um, from his gravesite. Oh, and I asked them to, um, ha you know, how to go about what's the process to get, get a replacement. And they had one there for me. It was fantastic. Wow, they were the greatest. So thanks to those two groups. Thank Absolutely. You. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. LM. First of all, Jason, you owe an apology. And if you don't want to apologize, then I understand well, no, where no, you're no, coming no, from. No. The language is coming from a supervisor, a board of chairman is unacceptable. And you, you to did a apologize. woman, you don't talk that I way. Did, I did apologize. Yeah, you did I, apologize. I, I, first of all, I was referring to us being that word. But I should not have even used the abbreviation of that word. And I apologize to you. I'm sorry, Unre I did not hear that then. Yeah, uh, I, but but it, was, it was not reference to you. It was reference to me. But, uh, but un, un, Unreservedly, I apologize for even using that word. I should not have done it, so I apologize to you for that. Okay. 
because I was furious at that. Yeah, I, and, that and please know that I was not calling you that. I think That's I think how I took it then. oh, that was not. That I, I was saying that I felt like I was being called that, but it doesn't matter. I still shouldn't have said it. So I apologize for even using it in the first place. Yeah, so so now that's. I got a couple questions. Sure. One, when you go to the court to have this changed, are you, will you notify us? No. Why? Well, we'll pay you. Uh, we, we have just indicated the roadmap. I don't know why we would notify you because this is going to be between the judge and the two parties. You're not a party to this. Well, we We're have trying. Please, you asked a question. Let me, let, me, let me bring this to some certain resolution. We, we have identified a problematic situation and we're, we're attempting to be result oriented on this. The judge is going to handle this in a very perfunctory manner. He's going to identify the two parties and upon the request of the two parties, he's going to amend the order. He may not even ask for us to, to attend a conference. Even if I were to notify and have you there, I, I don't even think the judge would entertain you because you don't have party status. Now with that being said, as I've always said, we will continue to keep you uh, updated and, and we've done just that. I, I've stayed true to my word relative to that. Well, I think updated would have been, if you knew it today, you should have updated us before the meeting, not here saying, oh, we got it. That's not updated. No, that's, that's, this is, this is the to, problem. Now, wait, you, wait a minute. You're I'm continuing talk, to I'm transmit and you're not listening. I Let am. Me, you just the, said the you board, would The us. board fleshed this out in executive session less than 30 minutes before we walked out here. You were the first to know in addition to everybody else that's, that was in an attendance and watching this. What is interesting, if the board, that means the vote was at least three to two or more. Now, when you talk to each one of you individually, you all implied that you were for the height bars and nothing was really that wrong with height bars to us all. This has been going on for 10 years. And then all of a sudden, when you have a vote in private, you don't keep your word. So this is how politics, I know this is politics, mm -hmm. and this is how you run. But don't run that you've got to be honest people running then. I, I need to stop you there. It's not politics. It's called executive, it's called a uh, executive session. Okay. It, it is one of, uh, one of the enumerated reasons to be able to meet outside of public meeting is for a point of potential litigation. That's what this is. Okay? okay so there is no politics. Okay. It is statutorily just... provided. And the direction was given in executive session. There was no vote taken. There's a discussion, there's direction given, and then we've reported on it in the sunshine, if you will, in accord with Pennsylvania sunshine law at the public meeting. I have no problem answering questions, but we need to be factually and legally accurate as to what the board has done, what we're proposing to do, and the intent with which we intend to do it. Okay, may I ask a question? How come Wawa then told you what they were going to do? They did not do that. Again, that's you said not you, factually you said you accurate. Got a thing from Wawa. What I reported on this evening was we heard complaints, including yourself, as to the, the condition of these height bars. We've heard complaints from others as to the safety and the liability threat. We also had discussions with Wawa. Wawa didn't tell us anything that we didn't already know through our own investigation. How many, how many others complained about the height bars, to be honest with you? And how come it just came up all of a sudden now? I, when it I, was in there for a year and a half with no problems. Now the lady whose husband worked for Wawa filling the potholes, who lives on the other side of town, had a complaint about the height bars because her car was so high and she didn't know how high it well, was. I, I, I can only speak what was represented to me and, and these complaints have come in um, a flurry here, a flurry there over a, a, you know, a quite a few years. How, how, I, I, I don't. You're asking years. me how many angels dance on the head of a pin. I can't give the you that height answer. Bars I, been I, can only, I can years. only tell you that there was enough of, of a concern and there was, there was enough complaints to warrant us giving attention to this, namely you. You were the lightning rod on the issue which forced us to further investigate this. Well, the height. So I thank I you for that. We're not against the height bars. We went them. No, but thank you to you. you. You forced us to look at the situation, and that's why no, the height didn't. bars are coming down. You let down. them put the 16 foot in and didn't do anything didn't, about it. That's why again. we came back to you. We're, we're now debating. Okay. First of all, Mr. Schuster had Michelle and I come in, and we wrote up this court order thing almost. That we were the ones to do it. After he got it done, he cut us out very promptly. Very nice of it. That's that we now know where he stands. All right. Then, um, okay, how many objections did you really have? How many objections? Mm -hmm, to the height bars. Over, over the course of the years since they've been installed? Yeah. I, I can't speak to that. I can't well, speak to that. If they're so dangerous, how come they're dangerous? What is the danger of them? A, 
An issue was presented to this board. The board committed to investigate with a result orientation. That is what we did. The ultimate determination was that they represent a certain safety threat and a liability. Both Wawa and the township agree with that. By virtue of that, the height bars come down. New access limiting measures will be employed. We will look at that for a year. Now, with also no, not a year. Th this we notion that the adjoining there. property owners are somehow victims to this, my analysis also reveals that there was certain buffering that was installed, and there was a fence that's the equivalent of some houses in Warminster installed as well in an effort to uh, ameliorate whatever adverse impact this access way may have. Why would so this notion that we come before the board as victims relative to this access way, again, not factually or legally accurate. Proposal is as I recommend, and we will continue to monitor this. Okay, well, do you know why the fence was installed that high? To the benefit of the neighbors. For what reason? It was installed for the benefit of the neighbors relative to that development. In the, adjoining pro in the adjoining property. The fence was only installed because Wawa took the pine trees, which were down to the ground, and cut them up higher, higher, after they were told not to cut them. Three times cutting them, and that's why the fence was installed. I, that I is will not never, for anything to do with the traffic. I will never be able to ameliorate or change your opinion of Wawa. Right. That's not my business. My, but no, I will wait, tell no, you wait, this. I will tell you this. I'm the not board, against Wawa as, wait a minute. I'm not suggesting I'm not that. against Wawa as a store. I am against their illegal moves of their policies and not following any directions. They do their own thing. No tree protection. No nothing. You don't know any of the history. They did, they did whatever they wanted when they built. The people came out and said, put up a, the orange fence. They didn't bother doing it. Why should they? They took the fence down when they were told, they testified not that they weren't going to do it. Now why do you go to a zoning board? Why do you have a zoning board in this township? If you don't have to listen to them. Again, that's not that's not factually or legally accurate. I, I'm going to yes, stop you every time you, you seek to go down the gradient of, you don't of know fabrication. The that's the problem. Th you that's don't not know the that's not the case. You don't know I, the history. You, 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 don't you know came it. here this evening with extreme contempt before investigation. You didn't even hear what the proposal was. You're you're looking for avenues no, to, 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 to controvert to contra that's all. We didn't we, ask we, for anything else. The board is committed to investigate this. They did just that. And they've come up with what they believe at this juncture to be a result-oriented approach. And then they're going to take it under advisement. But that, then yeah, for seven months, the evening. board didn't bother with them when they were in violation of a court order. They didn't care. None of the board cared because Wawa has some control over somebody because they can do what they want. And they, they Again, and hyperbole the, for which there's no factual basis. Around, so you really don't know. So when you talk, you know. But that, know but that's the benefit. See, that's the benefit. I come, I come with fresh eyes, and that's why we're going to, we're going to create a new chapter of monitoring and a much more effective means right. to limiting the access. Now, why then do we have? How about we call you or the board members when we see trucks, and then you notify Wawa? No, the the, the way the the notified. proposal, the proposal, and what Wawa has agreed to do is to have a complaint hotline for anything relative to whatever ills are going on in the Wawa property. You can contact okay. them by phone or email, and they will promptly respond. Yeah, and it's like the email that I got from Wawa saying is it that they don't have to answer the phone. I got an internal email sent around amongst Wawa. You don't even know that one. Well, I know that. Yeah, and the lawyers, the lawyer here, Savona lied because their lawyer said it was him that did it, and. Nobody cared, but we got the thing. So Again, they, pass this ignored. prologue. We're moving forward with this result-oriented right, solution, and we're going to take forward. it under advisement. You don't live there. You know, it should not be for a year then. My suggestion is to do it for six months and then revise it then, or three months, and look it over. If you've got trucks going down there already and then you take them down, then why do we have to have a year? Why not three months? Do you have any objection to three months instead of a year? What's the recommendation from staff? The year, right? For a year. But who, did, who set the year? The recommendation for a year no, wait, is... Who set the year? I want, I'm asking the board members now. They, they're the ones that voted. No, I'm the one that made the recommendation for a year. But you don't know any of the history, so you don't care. <laughs> I know that if you want to take a sample of something, six months is, 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 is not enough time. And anything north of a year is probably too much time. So, so the, 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 the most common quantum of time is a year. Well, then That's why come, I recommended it. How come you didn't feel And you can be the most vigilant of all your neighbors, and you can take a look, and you can monitor this, and every time you see a violation, I'm not for Wawa. you can, call, I'm not you can for contact the Wawa. of this board. Excuse me? This, the board, when they talk to us, they say different things to me as a person. And 
Mark, you must seem upset with wiggling around because you did this the last meeting too. Uh, um, I have ADHD. I'm sorry. That's why I'm wiggling around. Well, um, I, I'm going to defer to the attorney. There's a safety issue over there, and okay, we are addressing what is the it. Safety and we are addressing what is the actual correct. safety that's, issue? That's all I'm going to say. It wasn't installed. I mean, Craig didn't put the right requirements in for installing it. Is that the safety issue? Actually, there are no requirements. That's. But you, I, I have it right here. The plans, they're all written out. No, but there's nothing to review it against. But, but there how, is no. How come that was so unsafe when it was safe? No, it's Just unsafe. That it's, the, what made all, it unsafe? It's unsafe now. It's. Uh, that's why they're going to be removed immediately. But I, what made it unsafe? What makes them unsafe is not the necess it, It's not the installation, and I don't mean to cut you off, yeah, but it's no, not the installation. Okay? okay, we're not calling into question. As, as an effective means of curbing access, they have failed. And by virtue of that, people attempting to navigate, irrespective of those height bars, have compromised their structural integrity. And that's why we have the issue that we have. Okay, so in other words, people that disobey the signs are given credit now because we want to drive under thing and we hit it because, and now we're giving credit so we'll get them down. I do, I do so therefore say. we start hitting every sign in the township. <laughs> And we'll I, take them all down then, because they're, they're... I, I do got to say one thing, just with respect to this, this, this incident, because it is, well, I said this two years ago, however long it was, when, when the, the height bars, whenever the height bars were being discussed, um, somebody had thrown out, it may have been you, I don't know who it was, but somebody had thrown out putting up permanent height bar structures. And I, and I quickly, I said that as a, having been a police officer, I've written hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of crash reports. And many of those, especially in Randall Township, had um, uh, bridges. And truckers, the first thing that I would do when I would respond out to a truck slamming underneath a bridge mm -hmm. um, was ask them, do you know your, the height of your truck? And uh, every single time I've asked, nobody knew the height of their, their truck. Right. So I think with respect to this issue, um, we tried, I was adamantly against the permanent structure, we tried uh, the, the non-permanent structures because we knew how much damage there was right. going to be and so on and so forth. And um, so the fact that this is happening, I mean, especially from my own experience, it does not surprise me. It does not surprise me. I mean, I did not certainly consider that there was going to be damage to these things and they're going to be falling and potentially how falling. How come it doesn't happen though at Chick-fil-A, at Dunkin' Donuts? How come it doesn't happen? Only Wawa has the problem. I'll jump, it, well, I'll jump in one second because I analyzed all that and it was discussed. And I'm not sure exactly because there's no requ township requirement for those as far as the land development. I don't know if that's a building code issue. So you, when you jump over those other structures, it gets into building code issues. So there's no building code issue for Wawa for where you're putting it. I just want to make that clear because we don't review and this board doesn't act on yeah. whether a height bar is required. Well, okay. In the for those situations you mentioned. In the beginning, the height bar was not the a thing, if an issue. It was that no trucks. Then after a couple years of, uh, we had 147 pictures of trucks illegally doing it day and night, constantly. And everything, they put up signs, they did their speed thing. They did everything that you're going to do again. And everything failed. It did not work. And this, this is what, because they promised that nothing over eight feet would go down that road ever. And that is how they got the buffer zone area. That's how they got everything to put that road in. And when they make a promise, and under oath they took it, that they would have nothing to the zoning board. And it's in the meetings of the notes of the zoning thing. But they would have nothing over eight feet. Now, we worked for a couple years doing just, you're going back. You're doing just what you're saying, signs, this and that. So why are we regressing? We're not going forward with this. Well, it it's, didn't, so when this was originally agreed to this all happened before it's years and years and years yeah. ago but when this was originally agreed to again the height bars were not even a part of that right that, that was used as a way of trying to satisfy the residents it was used because they could not stop trucks right. from going down it so, ever so well so tried. so what i would say is it's something that we tried as a board it apparently has failed and now we're going to try something different well no you're not you you tried all the things that he just mentioned before but that was the first method of trying the height bars were the last straw because they couldn't stop the vehicles from doing other than closing the road down uh, i have a question yeah. hold on Bob. yeah a year, a year goes by and the problem still exists then what 
Well, then, then we're going to have to come back to the table and, and, and we have to revisit. I, I don't want to even, I don't want to contemplate that because I, I believe that what we're proposing is going to have a better deterrent well, effect than the height cars. doing it. With just the two, then they took the second way, trucks do it now. So what's the difference? They originally but to said Mr. McPhillips' point, after a year, we're going to sit back and we're going to identify how many complaints came in, how many complaints came in, in the nature of the complaints, and we're going to say to what extent, uh, you know, we can look at this is a private roadway it's, it's a private roadway for which the township has no responsibility other than the four corners of that settlement stipulation okay through our negotiations we have been able to bring Wawa further past the ambit of that stipulation okay and they're and they're one to to be pragmatic and result oriented with excuse, us excuse me this, I don't understand what you're saying what did you mean you brought Wawa further past the stipulation the obligations that they're agreeing to yeah. Are over and above what's set forth in that what stipulation. What obligations are they agreeing to that's over and above? This is as to the access curbing measures. Under the under that stipulation, it's only limited to height bars. The height bars are going away and we are going to engage certain paint striping, significant signage to the township satisfaction to ensure its effectiveness and um, the uh, the use of a speed table, at least one. What's the speed table? To slow them down, yeah. right? But nobody's complained about speed. To slow them down to the extent that it's going to make it less, they're going to be more, less incentivized to take the back road and they can, you know, it, it's, tractor it's the- tractor trailers won't, they originally said they couldn't even make the curve out. It was designed so they couldn't, and every tractor trailer, Wawa, big ones make it. Dump trucks, tow trucks, everything makes it. No problem with any of them. So that's why if you tried all this method, so we're going I, back. I don't now. know. I don't know what you mean by we tried all this method. In the beginning, in the past year, see that's where you should have learned some of the past. No, I, I've just I, as you're speaking, I asked both the township manager and the township engineer if any of these measures well, have been employed there. They did those methods before. You're making a very general comment about signs and stripings. I don't have any record of that. I know we didn't do a speed table. I'm sure there were no, some the signs. The speed thing was not done. Okay, we don't have, we didn't do extent. First of all, nothing's been designed yet as far as when he says striping. Well, you said we've already done it, but I haven't even seen what Wobble was going to propose yet. So I know we didn't do all of that. Well, there's signs that are saying, yeah, but the thing is, if you haven't seen what they're going to propose, but you passed it already. No, no we I have not didn't. passed it. See, this but, is the problem when we're trying to for, to give you an update, and you, and you come to that podium, and you're no. ready to fight. Well, you should give me an update at home. I wouldn't be here and wouldn't be no, talking to we, you. No, we treat way. you like every other resident, and we give you your, your, your time to make comment as to anything before this board or that could properly become before the board. But, but they we give did you the signs. same courtesy that we would give any other resident in this township. But they did signs before. These we signs, these but signs. okay. The, what, was, what was directed this evening was simply to give Wawa notice that the height bars come down. As to the, the alternative access measures that are being employed, Wawa is still preparing that, and then that's going to be analyzed well, by our engineer, myself, the board, to ensure that these, that these, that these measures are to the township's satisfaction. The signage is, is going to be a completely different signage than, than you've seen in any Wawa. I can what, guarantee you that. What's it going to be like, then? <laughs> <laughs> well, you say it's going to be different, so what's it going to be like? I, I, I can't speak to the design and color, but I can tell you that it's going. One of the complaints, and we heard you say this uh, at, at a prior meeting, was relative to this idea: what constitutes a truck? What, what, what kind of truck are we prohibiting? Anything these signs, over six foot eight. These signs eight will be specifically six, tailored. Two, That's all. These signs will be specifically tailored to prohibit the trucks that we're trying to prohibit and allow those that are able to traverse that access way. Pickup trucks were permitted down there. Anything that was lower than eight foot two was permitted down that road anything over eight foot two was not permitted. so there's a metric within which you can do that by way of weight axle and height and these signs now, will speak to weigh that them? when you're a, a driver of of a truck you you're cognizant of how how uh how heavy your your vehicle is or well, is or you should be how high your vehicle is also and you're also mm -hmm. cognizant of they're that it's the same to, type of restrictions yeah, it's very this, similar to this the is what you're saying the it's height. very similar to the height and weight restrictions that you see on a bridge. Okay, but shouldn't they, that doesn't mean they're not going to do it. Absolutely, it doesn't. But, You're absolutely right. Yeah. But it, it is the most, it's a more, more effective means than we have today. And it is 
um, a, a much safer means than we have today. Well, you could explain to all of us then what the height, the weight is, and the axles, and how high is the truck, how much is, no, you're not going to know that at all. But not one of you lived there to see it or hear it, and that's the whole difference. And also, why were they told, and why did they agree before they put a shovel in the ground that they would not let anything higher than the pickup trucks go down that thing? And now, all of a sudden, they got to have something different. I, I don't know what you're saying. When they got permission to get our buffer zone area. What do you mean by when they got permission? They went to the zoning board. Okay. Okay. They testified mm -hmm. that they wanted five feet more because they didn't want it. I have a letter. They didn't want to move the road in because uh, it was rather than move the retention basin, which they put in without measuring, they were going to move the fence. We got the things, I got the letter stating this stuff. They just did what they wanted to do. But rather than doing that, they were to, the area, they went a five feet of the buffer zone from the road out, which was going to be green area. What does green area mean? But that, that zoning case was resolved ultimately in a settlement stipulation that became a court order, and that is the very document. But this is the same thing that's in the court order. Correct. The well, they, no, that's what's one of the provisions. But now they don't want to do, it's not, but now they don't want to do it. So what's the difference? The height bar was the result of, the, of them not, because they had trouble with them, the trucks, the, everything the, going the, down. The spirit, the the spirit and the intent of what the height bar was meant to prohibit the signage, the speed table, and the striping is designed to do the same thing. Okay, and what's going to stop the tall trucks from going down, that we see them? The striping, the signage, and the speed table will be the means to attempt to do that. How, how will that stop a truck? Now, let's just be honest with time, you. Time will tell. They have no trucks there now. They all go down. They have all, so it's just a, it's a cop, cop out. But not one of you can come up with a good answer. If not, close the road down if they have trucks going down it. It, it's an access way that is shared by two other property owners. At the time, it was not shared by any other property owners. Because what two property owners share it? The bank and CVS. CVS was always there, so they're not sharing it. It goes across their property. I, Mr. Yes, Savone and I negotiated an easement. It that way. But you, it goes across. We had to get their approval. PennDOT okay. was involved. Oh, no, it PennDOT does. did. Fran Haney said to him, all he told us where to put the exit. He said they can make circles around CBS. They could go up the front. And they also had an option to put a traffic light in to take the traffic out to the front. And they did not follow that through per Fran Haney of PennDOT. Because he talked to us. He met with us. Yeah. So we know that they didn't do it. And they could put it up by Brando's. And even the second exit, it's further. Look along uh, Jacksonville Road. You've got a light at Jacksonville and Street, one at Wawa, I mean at Walmart, one at the train station, one at that village going in, and one at the school, all right in a little row. Right. Now, they could certainly put a light in there, and if they put it in at their second exit, it's further apart than the other ones. So they're, But they didn't follow through. All right. I think, so why not put a light in and then just have the traffic go out that way? It'd be safer for the trucks to make laps there because the trucks try to go out. We are approaching 25 minutes on this discussion. I, I just yeah, but that's not part. all my talk. There's well, agreed, talk. agreed. Uh, but I just have to ask that we. Okay, I'm watching my clock now. here too. It's not quite right. tw that time. Oh, yeah. well, but it's anyway. all right. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, no. this is gonna. This, uh, I understand. Uh, we're gonna continue this dialogue. I'm sure. Why didn't you put it on the agenda so we could really come out and we have some other people? Why wasn't it put on the agenda to bring brought up? Well, because we just dis discussed it this okay, evening. Will it be on the agenda next month then? I have no idea at this point whether it will be on the, an agenda in the future. Well, I think maybe it should be and then we can c discuss how well everything's going in the month. Once there is a negotiated, stipulated agreement revision, that's the time for the board to take action. That's when it would go and on the agenda. Be, it'll be in public, right? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it'll be on the agenda. I can't promise That's you next point. month. Yes, I cannot promise you next month. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. Right. Now, what about when you tell them now to take the height bars down? Mm -hmm. Are the orders for the no trucks going to be told to, to them at the same time? Or did I, they not put that in their plans? Right. I don't, we don't have the answer yet. We don't have the answer yet because we just came up with this right before the meeting. Yeah, that, but Wawa told you what they were going to do, no, right? No, they did not. No, they did not, ma'am. Okay, who came up with the ideas then? Our staff advises us. All, well, this group right here. Our staff, our professionals, okay. this, this our staff. Yep. We rely on their, their professionals. Yeah, 
but you're afraid of getting a lawsuit. That's all. They threatened. They threatened. Because we heard that before. I don't. Well, so that's all. Thank well, you. Anyway, yeah. I think that it's nice to know that the township the residents can do whatever they want because hey, you didn't stop Wawa, you don't stop us. We can dis disobey your court, your laws, your rules. Because why do we have to listen to them? They didn't listen all the way down, and it's been nine, nine, nine one or ten years mm -hmm. of not listening. And you let it go. Thank you, Ellen. Is there any other public comment this evening? Mr. Welsh. Good evening, Bob Welsh, Hollowell Avenue, Warminster, PA. Um, we have this be beautiful park that we have, and Fourth of July is coming up. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in the future that we could have professional fireworks at the park? Amen to that. Uh, ab absolutely. How much are you going to contribute? Yeah, we, we discussed that. <laughs> well, let me see what I got. We yeah, tried to do it for more. tricentennial, for our tricentennial celebration, and, and it, the cost was, and that was that's in 2011. Right. Yeah. We made like $20,000. So, so, it's, it's so like I mean, there, there are a variety of things you can do with fireworks. Um, you, you, when you go out to bed and you bid them up on shell count and everything like that, um, it's certainly something that we would endeavor to add. Uh, keep in mind that the revival of Warminster Day is two years old, mm -hmm. and we're trying to continue to grow that. Um, the answer to your question, I mean, uh, as I see Warminster Day, I would love to have it be an all-day affair. I would love to have it, you know, with a, a name band that people would recognize. I'd love to have fireworks. As I'm saying this, I'm hoping Karen Whitney is not watching. Uh, <laughs> you know, but... We have to continue to grow it, and of course, funding is a huge part of it. Right. Um, we've been very fortunate that we have gotten a number of sponsors to help out to defray the cost, but as it grows, we would hope that more sponsors would, would help out and perhaps more contributions from the township. So I would love to see that occur. I think it would be a great event for the, uh, the township. Uh, it's just a question of growing that event and getting the funds for it. Because yeah, I wouldn't want to do it on 4th of July because they have them in Southampton on 4th of July. That, that, yeah, that's yeah. correct. Well, I heard that they were going to be stopping well, are they? Is that right? Well, that's, huh? I mean, so as Greg knows, I've, I've been poking him on this issue now for uh, a little bit of time. And, you know, one of the things that, like, I agree with you. I, I think that I think the Warminster Community Park is the best location for fireworks in the entire county. Um, I've taken my girls, no, having said that, I'm going to limit myself here. I've taken my girls to uh, the, the Upper South um, fireworks, and, you know, it's in residential areas. You have to park a mile away. You have to get a walk, or you have to get shuttled in. Um, so, again, in comparison, we have a, a beautiful park, wide open, two access points, plenty of parking. Um, and then I also uh, took them up to uh, uh, Peddler's Village. It's a little bit more open. Um, but again, it's it's a lot of it, there's some choke points that are there. So, uh, I, I mean, I I think with respect to bringing them in, maybe it's something that we can uh, start looking at at least. I mean, not for this July, but you know, in the future, right? For over a course of a year, maybe we can start looking at it and putting some numbers together. And uh, even if it's a matter of charging the public to pull in, because in order to see them, you'd have to you'd have to pull into the park. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I agree. It's something we want to endeavor to. To me, it's just a matter of mostly funding at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have a deficit in the park and rec fund, um, so the funds there are obviously limited. If a sponsor wants to step up and, and pay for the fireworks, that would be fantastic. But uh, it's something I would love to see occur in that park. And you're absolutely right. It's the, the showcase of Warminster with the uh, presentation you, sh you saw earlier and all the grant work that's going to be done at the park. Uh, it's really going to become a, a gem of the county, I believe. So. Oh, the, yeah, the grant work is an important point. Right. Do you, yeah. do you think it would cut down on the private fireworks that go on in, in, in the township? No. Probably no? encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't. Um, that's just my gut. I have no data to back that up. <laughs> But people like shooting off fireworks on the Fourth of July. Um, if and on if Tuesday. that Sixth of July, yeah, Seventh of July, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we actually had it on the Fourth of July, would some people say, "Hey, instead of shooting off our own, let's go to the park right, and watch right. it"? Maybe, yeah. If you did it on the actual Fourth of July, but uh, my gut tells me that it, other than that, it would not uh, have an impact on the the personal usage of fireworks. All right, All right thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welsh. Any other public comment this evening? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to move on to supervisor's comment. Mr. Monroe. Thank you. Uh, well, on that note, um, uh, it's going to be a happy 4th of July to everybody. Um, I did want to note 
uh, with respect to uh, because uh, it's it just occurred to me we haven't had a meeting uh, since the Memorial Day um, parade, and I had a, had a blast as, as I know, uh, if not I think everybody on the board throwing candy out to people. Um, the one thing that really st- stuck out to me uh, was the one moment during the ceremony at 10 a.m. before the parade, um, where they they asked the crowd for any of our greatest generation uh, World, World War II vets to to stand up, and there was nobody there. Um, and you know that that's uh, made me a little sad. Um, I do have a grandfather who's still alive, believe it or not. Maybe I'll bring him to the next one, uh, who fought in Italy. Um, but uh, you know that's it's if you know somebody that's out there as part of that greatest generation that fought uh, in World War II, you know, give them a big hug and do something nice for them because they are dwindling and they're going away quickly. So on that note, happy Fourth, and uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Ms. Frescator. Uh, yes, uh, I have an announcement I'd like to make. Um, Monday, June 24th is the 100th anniversary of Pennsylvania ratifying uh, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution granting women uh, the right to vote. That's huge, and let's celebrate that. Um, also, I'd like to wish everybody a happy and safe 4th of July. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Frescator. Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to wish everyone a happy and safe uh, Fourth of July. Please don't drink and drive. Take an Uber. Get somebody to drive you. The chief, is, he's not looking for any company over at the police station for the fourth. I also want to just go off base just for a second, if I may. Right. I want to thank my friend Tony Deutsch. He runs a um, Facebook page called Watch the Tram Car down in Wildwood. He's probably <laughs> watching our meeting right now on YouTube. Jesus. Tony was kind enough to bring me on his show last week introduced me to the breakfast club at the hot spot and introduced me to a bunch of the vendors along the boardwalk and I just had a great time with them and I, and I want to thank them. Keep up the good work, Tony. It's called watchthetramcar.com if you're interested in what's going on in the wild with Stoney's your guy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Mr. McPhillips. Just wish everyone a happy uh, 4th of July. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. McPhillips. Happy 4th of July, everyone. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Where are you going? Yeah, I guess.